We are the Button to Christ Ministry, an organization dedicated to the spreading of the gospel to the world. Led by founder and president Patrick Baker, we are committed to reaching souls and restoring families for the kingdom of the living God. Believing in the power of prayer, God has inspired us to help those suffering from depression, abuse, demon possession, and spiritual warfare. So sit back and enjoy this program from the Button to Christ Ministry. Amen, amen, amen. We're giving God praise. We're giving God thanks that he has been our sustainer. He has been our guide. And we are here again another Sabbath morning to present to you our case. Do we have a case this morning? We have a case. We have a case. And so, just so you know, we also have our dear brother and sister, Ricardo. 
and Samantha. <laughs> so we have our brother Ricardo, sister Samantha here, and we're giving God praise and thanks. And before we go any further, let it, let us indeed contact the ITAR before we take off. We have a powerful um, message yeah. this morning and discussion. And as we give God praise, we give God thanks. We know that he is working in the meanwhile. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we are grateful and thankful that you have kept us during the course of the night. You have allowed us to wake up in our right minds. Thank you, O oh Lord, that we have not received a phone call today that any family member or anyone has been in the hospital or passed away, Lord. We're just so grateful for all your blessing. Thank you that the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, that we can come to you on your Sabbath to praise you. And Lord, as we embark upon this Sabbath school lesson, talking about your armor, talking about relationship, Lord, I'm asking you in the mighty name of Jesus, that you will be our sustainer now. Holy Spirit, take full control. May you lead the discussion. May you lead everything that will be said and done. And give us the way out to apply to our lives. So our relationship with you and with our spouses, with those whom we come in contact with, may grow deeper and stronger. We thank you. We praise you. And we exalt you, Lord. And we give you all the worship. And we ask it all in our Savior's name. Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. So, brother, we just want to welcome you. Remember, last time we we were here, we were in the BCC radio station. We still are here, but just a different location. <laughs> and, and we have our brother and sister joining us. So it's a blessing, yes. brethren. And Amen. we're going to be talking about the waging peace within the marriage. Oh, How do you wage peace Mercy. within the marriage? We have testimonies to go through. We Amen. have some audio files that we're going to be listening to brethren from those that have sent them in and we're going to dissect them we're going to break them apart so we need you to get your pens and your papers to write down yep. some of these notes so that we can discuss it so that we can dialogue that you can make some notes in the chat and we can just talk about it because there's some pressing issues that are happening within marriages that are happening within relationships that we need to be able to address and we can only address it with the word of God. Amen. Amen. So we're, we're, Amen. I'm, I'm excited. Yeah. We're going to jump right into it because there's so much to, to take apart. Come on now. Come so on I just now. want to just pass it over to recording Samantha if they don't have any greetings Amen. for those watching Button to Christ Ministries. Go right ahead. Okay. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Button to Christ family. As I love Button to Christ to watch. Uh, I always love to watch Button to Christ because you learn a lot from Button to Christ and Button to Christ just want to reach out to the family. And this is my motto from Button to Christ. What does it take to be free? <laughs> Amen. Amen. So this is a, a very intriguing, very interesting um, topic that we're going to look on. And I'm going to learn from this and I pray that you all can also learn. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. So we're going to jump right into it, Brother Andrew. We yes. are talking about waging peace. Uh, we are about raging war. <laughs> but we never, I never heard about raging peace. Waging peace. Waging peace. Man. Peace within the marriage. Yes. Brother, can you think yeah. about the relationships that you have right now? Whether you're married, whether it's in, within the family. Mm -hmm. Is there peace? Mercy. As we ponder on that, and remember too, it's not only an individual thing, it's a corporate thing. Mm -hmm. So don't look at it from an individual yeah. perspective only. Also look from it from a corporate perspective. You know what I mean? It extends to family. It extends to other people around you. It extends yeah. to the entire borders of your community. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Is there peace there? Is there war? Are you the peacemaker? Remember the word says, blessed are the peacemakers. Come on now. <laughs> and we are making peace. So let's jump right into it about waging peace. As you're pondering, as you're thinking about, man, peace. What, what is that? What does it mean? Exactly. <laughs> so, so, man, the Ricardo, what, what do you guys think? What Amen. does peace mean? What does peace mean to you? Well, we do know that peace comes from God. Amen. That's one. Amen. And it, the peace is linked with faith, mm -hmm. right? So it, it, it's just knowing that regardless of what we're going through, the Lord, you know, you're, com you're com comforted, right? Mm -hmm. And you're not um, stressed out because who? Jesus. 
Jesus is, is taking that burden. That, I mean, that's kind of long-winded, but that's how I think about peace. Yes. And yeah. for me, peace in, is entrusted in Christ. Jesus said, peace I leave with you, not as this world given, but I give you my peace. So mm -hmm. true peace comes from Jesus Christ. But a lot of times we do not embrace the peace that comes from Christ. Mm -hmm. It's just to trust in him and his word. Amen. If you want to study that word, you will receive that inner peace mm -hmm. that surpasses all understanding. Mercy, yeah. mercy. And don't forget what Isaiah says, for some of us who will go to our beds at night, and we can't sleep, but remember, if our mind is stayed upon the Lord, um, it says here in Isaiah 26, verse 3, great peace have they whose mind stay, is stay. stayed on thee. Yeah. So if your mind is stayed upon the Lord, trust me, you will experience that great peace Amen. of mind. Amen. 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 And, and I know we're taking it from the biblical perspective. When I even looked it up, what the word peace means, just from the definition in the dictionary, it says free from disturbance. Amen. Mm -hmm. Free, free from, from disturbance. disturbance. Mm -hmm. And that's what it's about. Free from disturbance. Our minds we're looking at, we're looking at our surroundings free of disturbance. Mm -hmm. So we praise God for that. So let's, we're going to get into the audio soon, but <laughs> we're going to wait a while to, to get in there. Amen. Um, so we know that God sees all things and he knows all things. Amen. And this lesson study was looking at the armor of God. God, looking at the armor of God, putting on that full armor. So let's look at the armor of God right now. Let's take our Bibles and go. let's go to Ephesians chapter six. Come on, sister. We're talking about that heavy duty thing here. Yes. You know what I mean? We're going to break down the armor. What does this part represent? Mm -hmm. You know, how do you prepare? How do you have this? Ephesians chapter 6, mercy, talking about the armor. Who is your armor? Who is your armor bearer? Who is your, you know what I mean? How do you get this armor? Yes. But I want to bring something to our attention. Mm -hmm. Notice the armor have no backing. It's all face that, forward. That's you know what I mean? Very deep because there's no turning back. Yes. <laughs> Jesus have your back. You know what I'm saying? Yes. <laughs> and he's your armor. So it, it's a face forward situation. Yes. You have to face your foe. You have to face some situation. You have mm -hmm. to face some trials, some testing. Whatever it is that it, you know you're you're going through, you have to face it. No protection for the back. Right? Mm -hmm. It's all face forward. So we have to march on. We have to move forward in Jesus' name. And we're going to get into some audio shortly and momentarily in regards to some response um, that other individuals have, some views, some, some take on it in Jesus' name. We know time is running, but here we go in Jesus' name. Ephesians chapter 6, let us pray as we journey. Father in heaven, we come again, Lord. We lack understanding. We lack knowledge. We lack wisdom. So, Lord, we're asking you now to teach us, Holy Spirit. You came as our comforter and to lead us into all truth. So as we read your word, Lord, now open up our eyes and allow us to see it spiritually, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So let, let us read here, Ephesians 6. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Let, let's go from... Let's go from 10 to 18. We, we'll, we'll do four, and then you guys can do four on this side as well. Amen. Okay. amen. Split so it up. Amen. Yes. <laughs> so it says here, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Amen. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to what? Stand yes. against the wow. wild of the devil for we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities against powers against the rulers of darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places wherefore take unto you the old armor that he may able to withstand in the evil day mm -hmm. and having done all to stand stand therefore having your loins girded about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness Amen. 
Go ahead, family. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Amen. And take the element of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Pray always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. And for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may hope in my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. Amen. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. Amen. And that's what it's and that's what it's about. Now, as we look at this armor though, how does this armor affect our relationship? How do you see the armor in your relationship? You know, there, there, there are certain points that we, we definitely have to bring up, we have to touch on. You know, what I mean, relationships, especially with, with marriages these days, who fight for that? You know what I mean? <laughs> I, I, I was I was sharing with Sister Michelle that I was on the um I was at the train station and I'm waiting and I'm I'm there just observing. And I said, okay, let me count and see how much men in comparison to women that I will see. And I could count on one hand or two hands rather, mm -hmm. but the amount of people that's there, but it's all women. Mm -hmm. And then I went into a subway and I was there again wow. on the train. And I said, okay, let me count and see in one cart, how many men is in this cart in comparison to women. And I, again, I could count on maybe seven men, you know what I mean, including young boys that I saw there, but the rest is all women. So I'm saying that then there is more women than men. I don't know where all the men are, but there are more <laughs> women than men. So majority of the time, relationship, you know, things comes up in relationship. You know, most people, they just walk away. They, they decided, man, I got options. You know what I mean? I, I don't have to stay in this. I don't got to work this thing out. I don't have to stand and fight for this. The older people, like, you know, our, you know, our grandparents and our great grand, they fought for their relationship. Yeah. You know what I mean? They stand, they fight. But what's going on with this generation? What is happening now? Why are we not fighting? What is happening, Sister Michelle? Um, we're going to find out. Okay, let's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to find out what is happening because he said a, a very important part there that there's no fight anymore sometimes for relationships. Right. Right. People are like, okay, you offend me. I'm out. They're gone. Mercy. They're not hanging around for anything. Right. They're not saying, okay, let's sit down together. Let's try to, to work it out. Mm -hmm. yes. But there's so much benefit in trying to work things out. Mm -hmm. have, have you guys had a situation where you had to work things out? Yes, and you call it confrontation. People do not <laughs> like to. Confrontation is not you arguing with each other. You must sit down and reason out the problem. And people don't want to reason out the problem because you hurt me. And because you hurt me, I'm prideful now, I'm self. So I'm trying to justify self. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when you know that you are wrong, you yeah. must give up your rights. And even when, when you right, are, right. when even, yes, he's saying, by the person, if you are right, give you must right. give up your rights. Mm -hmm. But nobody wants to do that. True. I gotta justify my, 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 myself. I gotta justify, you said this and you hurt me. So this is where you come in confrontation. Mm -hmm. We must sit down and can reason and talk. The Bible says, come now, let us reason together. together. Come on now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah some, some serious talk in that, you know. Yes. You're digging deep, you know what I mean? Yes. Yeah, reasoning together is not just like a simple why let's, you know what I mean, fade over the situation. But, you know, but we have seen, though, over the years that many uh, 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 marriages, couple as well, what happened, they don't talk about the situation. They mm -hmm. they will just, you know what I mean? They, they they spend some time apart, maybe a week, couple of days, one go to one's parents' home, da-da-da. They don't come back and confront the situation. But they come back just to talk, hey, how are you doing? And they start talking again without dealing with the issue, without, you know, saying, hey, you know, this and so forth, so on, you know, try to work it out. Yes. So it, it, it seems then that majority of, of, of people in comparison to the armor, let's touch the armor in comparison to how we are, 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 are dealing with things. In verse 10, it says, finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord. Yes. 
and in the power of his might put on the whole arm of God that he may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Now, in when you look comparison or when you look at the armor, yes. when somebody call it a stand, that means you're ready. Mm -hmm. That means you're not just, you know, just kicking back, relaxing, or it's oh, it's break time now, so I'm good. No, you're standing, you're fighting, you're you're knowing, say, you know what, it, it, I, I have to fight. Mm -hmm. The Lord is calling us to fight, to be vigilant, and same it, it is that it affects our relationship, mm -hmm. that we must be standing wow. and know this is, it's not in our might or in our power, but it's in the power of the Lord. It says in the what? The, his might and his power. That's what we're supposed to be fighting. Not me coming up against your sister Michelle, you know, because I'm a little bit taller than you. We don't see eye to eye all the time, right? <laughs> but you know what I mean? It's not me punchline in my point right, to bring right. it across, but right. me bringing it in such a way that, okay, Lord, how do I address this situation? Mm -hmm. What is happening? I mean, we're going to get personal momentarily, but let us dig a little bit more in it in jesus name amen standing so what does standing represent you know when when the bible says stand standing what does that mean to you sister michelle stand you know what it it is um one step to towards something bigger mm -hmm. i relate it back to a child right to mm -hmm. a baby you know the babies they have to crawl first and then they have that moment when they're standing there with the yeah you're standing right right mm -hmm. and when you're able to stand now it is the first step to something even bigger mm -hmm. which is walking mercy which is then running mm -hmm. so the first step is to stand and to get your sta stability mm -hmm. because when children start standing they're just kind of wobbling and sometimes they fall again and then they get back up and they have to stand mm -hmm. so sometimes that happens is that when we are trying to stand we may fall Right. Mm -hmm. But we have to get back up because we we have um we have something where we have to go forward. We have to walk, and we have to walk by faith and not by sight. So we have to walk. Amen. So standing up sometimes is difficult, mm -hmm. but we have to do it because in Ephesians it is laden with stand. Come on now, and you're not standing like leaning on a wall. You're you're like standing <laughs> in. In an army way, you're ready to Where fight. It? You're Where ready to fight. Brother, I got it. Talk to me. So, so what what does standing mean to you? Yeah. So you're not able to stand. I mean, you are rooted and grounded, right? Yeah. Because yeah. when something is established, it not it cannot move, be moved easily, right? Right. Amen. 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 And what about you, my sister? Um, you know, standing. It's you know, I think about a firm foundation, Amen. which is the word of Amen. God, Amen. right? So if there's no preparation mm. for battle, you mm. know, then it, you're, you're you're not gonna be able to stand against the wiles mm -hmm. of the, of the devil. Yeah. So it, I think standing. Is you know how you're able to stand, we need to be studying the word of God Amen. and feeding ourselves constantly with the word of God so that we're able to stand. Amen. Meaning that compromising. Amen. Yes. And I love I love that part of putting feeding. Yes. You know what I mean? So you're prepared, you're feeding, meaning you're strengthening up your legs. Mm -hmm. You're going to the gym, you're strengthening up your muscle yes. to make sure to say, you know what, man, mm -hmm. I gotta get these strong legs. I have to. I mean, we, where we are right now, we have to walk up some steps. And man, we were out of breath. You know what I'm saying? So we know that, you know what I mean? We need we need them to strengthen up our legs. And so it is that we need to strengthen up our spiritual well-being. So in, as, as my dear sister said, feasting. You know, when you think about a feasting aspect, you must be feasting upon the word of the Lord to strengthen. Amen. 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 And as we are thinking about feasting and how do we stand we're going to go to our first audio and this audio is taken from everton baker yes. that last name sounds familiar <laughs> <laughs> so that's part of brother patrick's family everton baker he sent us in an audio so we're going to listen to our first um our first viewer here everton so we're going to bring it up on the screen and brethren again get your pens and get your bibles out Take some notes. What is the same to you in regards to peace, the waging peace? How do we have it in relationships? Mm -hmm. How do we have it there? So let's listen. Praise God. Go right ahead. Yeah, so resolving conflict in a marriage, it has to start with communication. And one of the most important things about communication is listening. 
<clears throat> each person in the relationship, husband and wife, have to be purposeful in their ability to listen to each other because communication is one of the biggest humbug in terms of what happened in, in, and our cause conflicts to arise. And after that is done, you know you have good listening skills and so per adventure you're going to have conflicts. Well, having the conflicts does not mean that this is the end of everything. It means that you have to have a situational room, a room that is predetermined by both of you. It not have to be a physical space, but it's an area where it is you and the party, when you don't have a conflict, it's called to the situation room. And in the situation room ha must have rules. Rules in respect to um, one person speak mm -hmm. at a time, the other party listen, the other party do not interject into what is being said, no matter how it sounds weird, and each <laughs> person get an opportunity to voice their opinion, get the answer to everything, and when that, at the end of that process, even if it have to take all day, all night, whenever, how long, if there needs to be a part two to continue <laughs> the discussion, it has to be done because one of the things is that when people are kind of angry, they speak out of terms, they do things. That, but when you have the situational room with the rules, the rules have to be written out and established, you know, and everybody know the rules. So when you go into that room, these are the rules we are going to abide by because if we're not into a controlled environment and situation and nobody's in charge, you don't have a third party. Things can easily go downhill again and get out of hand. So I believe that once you have that established and parties respect each other, and that has to be, no matter how different you are in personality, there has to be mutual respect and uh, understanding. And, and once you have those things, you will easily go into the situation room and want to ensure that you get the pieces together and that's basically the thing to assist with the resolution of conflicts yeah so amen mercy 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 like our situation room now <laughs> no but that's a very powerful point because right. i never really thought about that that, that that's something definitely we're gonna definitely implement in you know in our relationship in regards to even with others with even within our family to say hey you know we need to go to the situation now right, I mean, right. <laughs> I have to go work on some resolution here right you know right. what i mean but he brought forth some powerful points in regards to even when you're in the situational room in regards to part of communicating the major part is listening mm -hmm. you know not speaking out of terms so we have to you know come up with the rules based upon your family based upon what you have to say you know are you willing to work things out but these um things can be put into place before the conflict comes mm -hmm. to say, okay, honey, you know what? We know we're not always going to see eye to eye. So when, in case there is a situation, a disagreement, something we need to talk about, mm -hmm. let's, let's use this room, you know, rather it be in the bathroom, rather it be wherever, wherever you place, you know, that, that situational mm -hmm. room. Mm -hmm. I think that's a definitely good yes. um, um, thing there. And it, it brought forth a, point as well it's also a controlled environment that you don't speak out of terms but right. you're able now to listen yeah even though you might think what the person is saying man you're talking foolishness <laughs> you know but you have to listen and, and show that respect he, he used this word respect each other yeah to listen yes. you know what i mean your turn to speak you speak my time to listen i'm listening vice versa right. just doing that so you know we're seeing them in standing with the armor, we also have to know, okay, wh where are we going to war? Where are we battling? Where are we fighting? What are we fighting? And and so we're, we're, we're bringing it now into a situational thing. You know, what are some of the situations that you might need, you know, resolution on and talk about? Yeah. That's my thing. Um, you know, Brother Andrew, just to add to that, you know, I've heard of a situation where you could have 
a smooth moment. Mercy. So as opposed to like a that. physical space where you're going to, to have the conversation, mm -hmm. it's a truth moment. So you know that, hey, this is a safe space mm -hmm. where we can actually tell the truth. Wow. And, and, you know, and have understanding mm -hmm. of, of what each other is saying, you know, and, and, and not be defensive when yes. the truth comes out. Mm -hmm. Sis, the truth is hard, you know. <laughs> Because you you know what that that's a part of the armor, right? right. Mm -hmm. it, it's having that that truth and mm -hmm. to be able to say this with truth because I'm very big on Angie knows that it's how it's in your delivery. Yes, absolutely. right. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the active listening skills of the other person, mm -hmm. how you deliver that truth because some people are just like da -da 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 -da. Mm -hmm. and then you're on the defensive right and you're mm -hmm. trying to listen but all you're hearing yes. are is the the yeah. tone the sound effects. Yes. Yes. come on now come on now I, I don't know if it's a it's a, if it's a woman thing but uh, what do you think brothers and sister it's all about the delivery it's all about how you put it forward. What do you say? How do you say it? Now, with the, as my dear sister says, with the sound effects. Now, when you're, when you're thinking about all this as you're pondering, Brother Ricardo, right? And you're thinking about, okay, truth moment, situational room. What are some of the things then that, that you can see to say, okay, how does this armor in standing for what is right, standing for truth, how do I bring this forward knowing that it's not in your might, as it says, mm -hmm. and it's not in your power, but only in God's power? How do you bring forth the truth in your relationship in God's power, not using your own, like, listen, man, <laughs> you're wrong. Yes. This is this. Yes. Da, 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 da. You know what I mean? But in that same compassionate way to say, okay, how do I reach my wife? How do I get her to that point where she can actually see Christ in me speaking, mm -hmm. even though this is a confrontation yeah. or a situation? Right. Yes. Go ahead. You can, you can be um, agitated by the, um, the husband or the wife. So mm -hmm. the Bible says a soft answer turn away wrong, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I can be urged, but I must gather my thoughts. Yes. How can I go to my wife? Because I may be right what I'm saying, mm -hmm. but it is the approach. Mm -hmm. In early writings, 100 and, 119 paragraph one, it said, if pride and selfishness were a lay aside five minutes, Mm. We will move most difficulties. Stop right here. If my if I could lay aside my pride, my selfishness, because I am hurt, I want to get my point across. We are told if five minutes, if we just take five minutes to ponder, get on my thoughts, how I'm gonna respond. We are told uh, a soft answer. Turn it away, right? Turn it away, right? Even though you are wrong. You must say, listen, I must humble myself and go to my wife and say, honey, you know I'm wrong. When you are saying you are wrong, what you are doing, you are putting away pride mm -hmm. and selfishness. Mm -hmm. And this can remove many difficulties. Right. Mm -hmm. So so one, once we approach the situation room, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, we have to set the atmosphere. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Yeah. All right. Come on, you set the Come on now. <laughs> so that, that, Talk to us. Talk to me. Indeed, go in prayer. Yeah. That is yeah. step yeah. one. They have to go in prayer and right. talk to the Lord. That will yeah. set the tone and the atmosphere. Yeah. Because yeah. people tend to to, to calm down when we're mm -hmm. approaching God is that respect and reverence mm -hmm. is there. Yeah. And also we can use the hymn, sing some songs, you know, mm -hmm. sing some nice songs that you love and that can even calm your temper, you know. Amen. Sometimes you can even come to 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, <laughs> Amen. So you're going to be hearing us using that term a lot. And, and, and so in seeing them, we're being prayerful. So, you know, Brother brother, um, brother Baker told us about wisdom here, yes. creating a situation a room. Can you also create this not only as a husband and wife, but as a family? Yes. You know, maybe father and son, mother and daughter, vice versa, what, whatever the, the, the how, it, how it works out and pens love, can you now create a situational room within your family, you know what I mean, uh, mm -hmm. uh, 
core to say, okay, you know, in case there's a situation, maybe a, even a deci decision needs to be made. It, does, yes. it doesn't necessarily have to be that there's a problem why we need to go to the situational room. Right. It can be a major decision that needs to be made, you know, going away from school or are you going to stay in school here or, you know, things like that, that you can bring, take, talk and listen, why do you want to go away for school? Why do you want to stay here for school? Yeah. Vice versa, whatever that situation might be mm -hmm. that is within the family dynamics. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know what I mean? Amen. And, and you know what? I'm looking at our YouTube chat here, and I love this definition of stand, because we're talking Come about on, what stand Come is. On now. And here it is, says, to stand in the Greek also means to be of steadfast mind, mm -hmm. to persist, mm -hmm. continue, persevere, which we need to do in these last days by God's grace. Mercy. Amen. Amen. Mercy. And, and that's what it's about because you know what? Thank you so much for sending in those texts. And so we're connecting and we're talking because this is what it's all about. We're being real here. It's a family moment. Mm -hmm. And we are talking about standing, talking about the armor. Mm -hmm. So now we look at standing. What else is there to the armor? So God calls us, tells us, stand mm -hmm. and be ready because you have to stand against the wiles of the devil. Mm -hmm. So standing again, as our dear YouTuber have just mm -hmm. told us, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Be vigilant, standing, and be armored up, ready to fight. Mm -hmm. Now, what's the next aspect after we stand? And be ready to, to go to war. We're ready to fight against the enemy. Because we, we identify, you know, we identify our enemy here. Mm -hmm. yeah, so yeah. it's not me fighting against you in the situation that mm -hmm. happened. But can we identify and say, no, you know what? You misinterpret my the way, the tone of my voice. Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, you misinterpret. Yeah. So, you know, when we're talking now, and then you say, wait, you know what? You're right, you know, because I was going through something at the moment. Maybe something had happened. And, you know what I mean? Via your tone, I was just kind of like, okay, what is he saying now? What is she saying? Yeah. So we misinterpret it because the enemy is behind the scene working, you know, mm -hmm. and he's working hard to make sure we don't come to the situational room with that, that unity in that prayerful be very prayerful. Amen. so we know that is worth so it. I, mm. I i want to throw something in there because we're talking about ideal situations yes. right? okay? okay we're talking about christian marriages yes. i mean but within christian marriages as well you may not always see eye to eye as you were saying sure. but the, you could also be in a marriage with maybe perhaps a non-believer right. so then how how can this can the situational room still work in the these instances of course Absolutely. yes and i okay. think go ahead brother ricardo yes. uh, the number one thing is that is um a family that prays together stays together come on so prayer is the number one thing mm -hmm. because prayer break down pride selfishness all about me 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 because when you are praying you're inviting god in the presence mm -hmm. and so now we can see eye to eye even though we have disagreements we will remove the disagreement at the end of the day, we can still see eye to eye. But if God is not in the in the midst of the, the relationship, they're going to be chaos. Mercy. Mm. Mercy. And, and, and even though situations happen where maybe individuals have gone out and, you know, as you said, you have one unbeliever and the next, that's why the Lord is pleading and petitioning with us, mm. young people who are watching, you know, before you make that decision, make sure it is the right person and yeah. don't become unequally yoked. But even though you're in an unequally yoked situation, of course, it's the key. Remember, as, as Brother Baker says, you know, is communication. Yeah. So, yeah. come on, you know what I mean? So even though one, one is unbelieving and one, yeah. this is where now you can be a witness, where, where they yeah. say, man, my wife, you know, you go to work and you say, man, my wife called me in the situation, you know, man. I could see, really see God, you know, mm -hmm. moving, you know, yes. in her in her life, the way she talked, the way, mm -hmm. even though I was wrong and she came to me so gently and so softly. And you know what I mean? You're appealing to that yeah. soul. And that's why you have to go to the prayer room and be very prayerful. Amen. Amen. In Jesus name. Amen. <laughs> So let's let's jump now and, and then talk then or you want to listen to we, another we can get into another audio. Yes, okay. we can get into another audio. 
So Red Room are taking notes here. I love how we're interacting on the YouTube chat or even here in the Zoom chat. If you have your comments, put them in there. We're talking about the waging peace. Mm -hmm. If you just joined us in YouTube land or on Zoom, we're talking about the waging peace. How do you sustain peace within relationships, marriage relationships, relationships with your children, mm -hmm. uh, with your family members? How do you maintain this and how does it correlate with the mm -hmm. armor of God. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go into the next audio, and this is from Brother Luke. So we welcome Brother Luke, and we're going to listen to this audio. Take your notes, brethren. Take your notes as we listen. Hey, Uncle Andrew. Sorry I'm late sending this. Happy Sabbath to you and everyone. Please pass along my love and blessings. Um, I would say... Uh, an important thing to keep in mind is that, um, sorry, I'm not trying to be the one who wins the argument. Mm. So remembering mm. to be a peacemaker and not trying to be right, but at some points being willing to let go of your argument or let go of whatever it is that you wanted for the sake of peace. That's just one thing to keep in mind within marriage and within any relationships and, and situations where there might be conflict or disagreements. All right. God bless. Thank you for the ministry you're doing. Amen. 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 Yes. I want to tackle that one first. Well, <laughs> well, 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 they said uh, sometimes we want to prove our points. You said this, you have upset me, mm -hmm. and you know, and and we back and forth, we go back and forth, and he said, it is not about who wins. Mm -hmm. So we have to just humble ourselves and say, listen, honey, I am wrong. Forgive me. Let us reason about this thing. Let us pray. I know, and you guys can, we can hug each other. So when we are doing these things, we're going to keep going back and forth, going back and forth. So that's why he, the key point he said is not about who wins. Mm -hmm. It's not about who wins. Because if we are dwelling on that, we're gonna go, we're gonna spend five hours on the same issue. Mm -hmm. If we can just put away our pride, put away our feelings and say, listen, let us just reason out this thing. I am wrong, forgive me of my sins. Let us hug each other and just give up each other little chips. Amen. 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 So so please, man, be very mindful. Indeed, if you need extra troops, we have those in different flavors. Amen. So, okay, so, so to be able to explain mm -hmm. to the viewers what that is, yeah. it's it's a little peck on the cheek yes. or, or, or just to say, you know what, honey, I love you. Embrace. Amen. Embrace. Amen. That, that's what that means. But brethren. Everything that we've been listening to, all I'm thinking of is dying to self. Mercy. It, Mercy. The self really, really yes. has to be yeah. crucified. And, and, the, and this is where verse 12 comes in. Mm -hmm. This is where verse 12 comes in in regards to dying to self. Notice what verse 12 says. Let's read verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So we're not wrestling. It's not me against you. Mm -hmm. or I'm trying to win, even though that's what the, the world that we live in teach us or are, yeah. are trying to point us that, you know, it's a, you have to be ahead. You have to be the man. You have to be the woman. You are, you know, you have to win. No, but it's a matter of, Okay, you know what? Let's break it down. I don't have to win mm -hmm. even though I'm in the right. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. I don't have to come down so hard to push my point to say, hey, listen, I'm in the right here. You're in the wrong. Why are you doing this? Da, 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 da. No, but this is now a, 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 an opportunity to be a witness to the next, yes. to your, to your next yeah. half. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yes. Because Amen. remember, you know, it's your next half. So, you know, instead of bringing in a third party, no, this is an opportunity. Brother Ricardo, what do you think? What's your take? This is one of the reasons. Could it be that the husband don't want to submit and the wife don't want to submit? So if both parties not submitting, 
this is going to we're going to find these these issues. Mm -hmm. And in uh, for uh, what for the wife to submit to her husband. Mm -hmm. First thing first, the husband must submit to Christ. Mm -hmm. And so the wife going to easily to see, to up submit to her husband. Why? Because she sees Christ mm -hmm. in her husband. Mm -hmm. And it will be mm -hmm. easy for each other to sub, uh, be submissive to each other. Mm -hmm. And you will not have these issues. You know, I think also to add to that, we just have to shift our focus as people of God or as children of God, that we're not fighting against each other, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. We're not each other's mm -hmm. enemy. So therefore, there should not be any point where we're thinking, well, I'm the winner. I won this battle. I won this argument. Mm -hmm. Or I am right. You Mercy. are wrong. Mercy. We have to understand that, you know, we are fighting against the enemy. Mm -hmm. And although we're butting heads right now, we need to come back on the same team Mercy. and work it out. Because Doctor, at the end Doctor. of the day, mm -hmm. God is the author and finisher of our faith. And he has total victory. Amen. Yeah. And you know, the analogy or the thought that comes to my mind is like a, a football game. Yes. You know what I mean? <laughs> and and sometimes you have your team members them that don't want to pass the ball and you're getting so upset and so irritated. I said, <laughs> man, I was hoping you should have passed the ball. <laughs> and you, you know, you're creating a scene and then you have the coach now or the captain after calling the team yes, members. Yes, I said, yes. come guys, I huddle here. Let us figure it out. Okay, you're playing forward, so therefore, when you get the ball, you have to pass it. Boom, 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 and two twos, boom, right, right after. It's a goal. Yes. It's a win situation. Exactly. You know what I mean? For, For the team. Yes. Amen. Yes. You know what I mean? So let us definitely be mindful and remembering that we're not wrestling against each other. It's not a flesh and blood thing. Yes. But it's against some serious powers and darkness and rulers of this world. And one thing, you can keep the marriage fresh. Mm -hmm. All right. you, can, you can always say, oh, you know, you look so beautiful. Come on, you, now. Look, so nice, you look so beautiful. Come on now. You got up this morning. You know, 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 texting each other only how was your day how was work mm -hmm. today you know what was work like you know only you know my husband my my uh my boss get on my nerves so you know what let us just pray about it you know because sometimes you can have a, the husband can have a bad day at work and you bring on this problem when you have at work um and the wife seeing this and the husband is in a bad mood and the wife mm -hmm. feed up that bad energy and each other now talking with each other the husband in the car and the wife over there you put each other not touching each other in the bed is separate. You know, <laughs> it's an issue that we face. Yeah. And as husband and wife and as family of God, we are not each other enemy. Yeah. So when we come to these issues, so we must dwell on the good qualities of each other. Mercy. You know, only you know when I just married, you look like like that is sunshine. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is why you keep the marriage fresh. You know, they be each other. You know, only we're gonna have date night. You know? Amen. Let us let us look at some documentary, animal documentary. You know, let us talk about um our marriage. Let us look at some picture of our past when we when we go on vacation. You know, and we have our good times. You know, this this thing can refresh. The marriage, refresh yes. the relationship, and keep the marriage young and fresh. Come on now. <laughs> Mr. Michelle, I hope you're taking notes now. <laughs> Glory to God. And, and, and so we're, we're, we're looking at it then, okay, how do you also keep your armor fresh? How do you keep Christ fresh in your life? How do you do it? Is it a daily relationship, worshiping? Is it daily in the word? How do you keep your armor fresh? How do you clean it and make sure there's no spot, there's no hole, or if something needs to be end up you're able to you know address it before the war begins because we know we're wrestling not against flesh and blood mm -hmm. but against principalities mm -hmm. so you know as we as we continue to journey remember you also have to be very prayerful amen <laughs> so that's where it's at so well, let us start then as we're looking at the armor so we address them we know we're not wrestling against each other or against flesh and blood um, we know that we have to stand. That means we're ready to fight. We're ready to war. Now, what are some of the other aspects in the armor? You know what I mean? We notice that he says the old armor as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's not a part of it to say, you know what? I'm good without the helmet, man. I can see or my head works better. Or I'm good without the breastplate. 
because you know it weighs down my chest too much. Or I'm good without the shield. But notice the Lord says the entire armor. That means as a soldier, you're standing, you have to ready, you have to yes. dress for the occasion. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And you have to dress up, up properly, mm -hmm. not missing anything. Wow. Yes. Yes. That, that's serious. That's, that's, that's serious because God gave us the armor because the element, this is where we hear the words and the words can penetrate. The breastplate mm -hmm. of righteousness, mm -hmm. guard your heart. Because God knows that the words they cut. And also yes. for husband and wife and even the family circle, we are told that we must guard well our words. Mm -hmm. Because our words can tear down each other and our words can build up each other. Mm -hmm. So that's why these, the armor of the armor is very important. Yes, sir. It is it, it, it protects us against the wise of the devil. It protects us against words of 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 bad words and all of these things that mm -hmm. we said to each other. So God, Jesus put these things on us. And as you said, you said, um, Brother Andrew, mm -hmm. how can we keep the armor fresh? Having devotion every morning. Mm -hmm. yes. Communicate yes. with the Lord. Come on. Read upon the word of God. Yes. Yeah, the family, the husband and wife of of devotion, you know, mm -hmm. um, um, build upon the word of God, you know, communicate and all of these things and mm -hmm. give, give your feedback, what you get from these scriptures. And I saw we can, the husband and wife can grow closer to each other while they're growing closer to Christ. Amen. 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 Right. And just to add to that, we definitely would, you know, want to, to guard the hedges of our time with the Lord. Mm -hmm. So we yeah. should try to limit distractions mm -hmm. and make sure that we are designated. The time that we designate to spend with the Lord, it should be uninterrupted. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah. something we should consider. Well, I, see. I, I like that. Uninterrupted. <laughs> you know what I mean? Sign on the door. Do not disturb. You know what I mean? I'm spending time with my Lord and my Savior, Jesus Christ. You know what I Let's stay a little bit on the mind. Mm -hmm. because, because the mind is a very powerful tool. Mm -hmm. Right? And in 2 Corinthians 10, verse 5, it says, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity what? Some thoughts? Mm -mm. Every, every, thought. every thought to the obedience of Christ. And I love our YouTube verse here that are helping us. It's go. We can even jump to Philippians 2, verse 5. Mm -hmm. It says, let this mind be in you, mm -hmm. which was also in Christ Jesus. Because when our mind is under attack, mm -hmm. you can say something. You can think that you're saying it the sweetest way ever. And in my mind, <laughs> I'm just taking it another way. Mm -hmm. So, brethren, we have to be so careful about the thoughts that are going through our minds because mm -hmm. the enemy would say, look, he didn't wash the dishes mm -hmm. and he's leaving it for you to wash. Oh, God. You're going to take that, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Meanwhile, he didn't need that. He may have just left it there, go use the bathroom and intention it, 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 to come, come back, back. Yes. and mm -hmm. to do it. So the enemy would put these subtle thoughts into your mind and then how do you deal with it amen. and and it's powerful we need to understand how to deal with these situations amen and that's where the helmet comes in so we're gonna jump from different verses as the lord would lead so that's that's where the helmet comes in yes. this helmet of salvation to protect your mind you know what i mean for you to have that word readily available mm -hmm. which is the sword so in protecting our mind notice that the war begins where? In the our mind. mind. You know what I mean? So that's why the, the Bible is saying, guard the avenues of your mind. You know, let's let's go back to the loins. Mm -hmm. The loins and what the loins represent, you know, the, this part that you have to put on first before you put on the, you know, some the rest part of the armor. So the Bible talks about, uh, here Paul talks about the loins. Mm -hmm. And that is in verse 14. It says, stand there for not sitting down and putting on your, 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 your lines. It says, stand there for having your loins girded about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness. So let's talk a little bit about the loins, mm -hmm. right? And what the loins represent. So you you're, you're put on this, this, this thing that covers basically your, from your belly button down mm -hmm. to I think where you're above your knee. 
And these are like leather strips or metal strips that mm -hmm. covers mm -hmm. up these area mm -hmm. in case, you know what I mean, somebody tried to cut you. It, 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 it covers and protect your belly. It protect your loins. Mm -hmm. And, and, and the, the word is saying, gird up yourself. So make sure, you know, you're tucking in whatever extra clothing you need to have. Nothing is loose. You're very tucked in and you're ready to go. What are some of the loose garments we might have in our lives that we really need to make sure that our loins are girded up? Remember, you ever seen somebody girded up? That means they look draped up. You would laugh at them and say, man, what your pants doing above your neighbor? But they're girded up. You understand? They're ready. And so it is. The, the, the Bible is telling us that we must gird up our loins. Have our, our, our belly girded up. Therefore, you know, whatever loose thing that is in our lives that we need to get rid of. Mm -hmm. Whatever things that are there that, you know, can get caught on something, you know, I mean, are, 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 you know, don't allow us to function or allow the girding of our loins to function properly that we need to get rid of these loose items, these loose, these loose things. So girt it up your loins. Picture a man now with all these things around his loins mm -hmm. all the way around tied up tight ready to go so if somebody cut at his belly say they're doing with fighting with the sword somebody cut at his belly his belly is protected his his legs his private area all these areas are protected mm -hmm. and so the lord is saying that he wants to protect us in the same way he doesn't want the enemy just to run up in us and 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 and, and you know cut out our belly bottom and mm -hmm. and that's it our loins are gone no the Lord wants to gird us up and make sure we're ready. We're ready with the word. Gird up the mm -hmm. avenues of your mind, right? With the loins of your mind, with the Amen. word of God. So you're ready. Amen. My sister, what do you got to say? In Jesus' name. Go right ahead. <laughs> no? <laughs> no thoughts no coming? Uh, so, so, so the lions, you look at the lions like the bed. Yeah. And the lion, the bed is the truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Amen. <laughs> Guard the loins, you are free from, from your pants not sagging, hanging. Mm -hmm. You are able to stand, you are able to move freely. Mm -hmm. You know, so you are free. Mm -hmm. So if you do not have on the truth, which is the loin, gird our lions with truth, we're going to have issues. Mm -hmm. We're going to have problems because the truth guard you, protect the loins. Mm -hmm. So you are able to stand, mm -hmm. able to able to not to have um, destruction. Yes. They can move freely because you have the line and it's girt with the truth. Amen. 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 Very powerful there, my brother. Having your loins girted <laughs> with the truth. Thy word is truth, oh Lord, in oh, Jesus' name. Amen. Go ahead. Do you want one? Well, we we know we have another, we have another um testimony, testimony and a comment. And a yeah. comments as well. So we want to get into that as well because. He talks about a lot of the, the things that us as, as as married people, people who are on the line, you know, maybe within the family as well, mm -hmm. may go through in your relationships with your mom, your dad, and so forth, so on. And, and, and let us break it down. We're talking today, how do you get that peace mm -hmm. within your relationship, within your marriage, within your family relationships? How do you get to that mm -hmm. point where you have that peace from the Lord in comparison to the armor, but the armor of God. How do you look at the armor and how can you gain that peace from the armor of God? So we're going to go to another um, another testimony and then we're going to come back and definitely talk about it in Jesus' name. Yes, yeah, so get this one is heavy, brethren. <laughs> so, so we definitely need to be prepared to, to hear and a lot of us go through this mm -hmm. and we just need to be real with ourselves we yes. need to be real with our spouses we need to recognize when our spouses are under a the same you know, bushes and, uh, which is also a prize that you're doing well over there this wonderful the day that you've been God. blessed the with god is going and, uh, to set the captives free the word of god is there, going yeah. to move mountains Andrew, the word of god is able to life. transform so we are ha we have to look at it as such that it is a tool, it is a weapon that can be used. And, uh, and when it is well uttered from your mouth, it must do 
something. Mm -hmm. It's not going to return onto you void. Mm -hmm. So I know Brother Sean is going to get that ready for us. And we are going to listen. I don't know if we can have a short word of prayer, Brother Ricardo, while we get that audio up. Lord in heaven, we thank you so much for your goodness. Thank you so much for the discussion, oh God. Thank you so much for the insight and the things that we are learning that we can apply um, in our marriage, oh God. And I'm asking you to continue to watch over the, the internet, oh God, the, um, the, the, the technology, oh God. We just want to give you thanks and praise. We are asking you for your presence to continue to be with, you, be with us and to come back with us. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 So we're going to be listening, Brother Sean. I, we're, we're signaling into the high tower over there <laughs> at the BGC oh, headquarters. Oh, so just let us know yeah. that you are Surprise ready to well go. And Brother, continue to send out this link to your friends and to your family. We have a jam-packed and, uh, day today with Fun to Christ there. Ministries. We have our, our voice wonderful voice. guests here, Brother Ricardo. You're going to hear more of his testimony later, so you don't want to miss that. Mm -hmm. And we're also going to have the spoken word as well. The, today's program is very compact, so you may not see us as long as you normally do. So brethren, please remember to send the link out, because Button to Christ, you're going to be going up until about 4 o'clock today. Mm -hmm. So brethren, send the link out. You don't want to miss it. Amen. You don't want to miss Amen. it. Amen. Yes, Brother Sean, we know we are not hearing it on our side, and we're not seeing it on the screen as well. So we're going to try and work out those technical difficulties I, there. I, and Praise God, we're hearing something. I'm here. and get back. Doing bushes, and uh, mm -hmm. I'm praise that you're doing well over there. This wonderful day that you've been blessed with. And uh, just hearing your message there. Brother Andrew, it's good to hear your voice, mate. And uh, on um, relationships. And, uh, and things like that. All I know is that um, how powerful the Word of God is and, uh, and how powerful prayer is and how powerful listening is more than talking. And, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, um, the renewing of the mind that allows the stirring of your heart when times get tough in a in a, in an abusive conversation that the enemy is trying to bait either party, the husband or wife or partner, into an argument to bait you, to tempt you, um, mm -hmm. in all of those situations. And I know my. Um, early days in my relationship with, with my wife. Um, oh man, she had a, a feisty fuse <laughs> where you'd only say the wrong thing and you could just, just know that it was coming nice. a massive blow up and it, the words were twisted and no matter what you said, even when you're treading very lightly, um, it's just uh, almost like the uh, the hole was getting bigger and bigger, and you're getting buried in it, you know. And uh, and it was like three days later, after not talking to you, you should come and talk to me. And um, like nothing had happened, but then the next argument would happen again. And who knows when that would happen? Um, all the um, arguments before would always get brought up. Like, it's like the situation was never forgotten. And this is very hard. It was very hard for me. I was, I was very new to walking with God, and um, and it was very testing to my relationship because I got to a point there where I really wanted to just say, "See you later. I don't need this in my life." But God said, no, I never abandoned you. And I love your wife as just as much as you. And uh, you'll stand in the gap for it. And uh, it was like an inner wooing. So this particular night, that happened. But something else happened too. And uh, 
It started in the kitchen where it seems to be where a lot of arguments happen. And um, I wouldn't have a bar of it. So then I just said, no, I'm not going to be a part of this uh, until you calm down. So I walked out, went into the um, master's bedroom and, you know, I was just preparing in there, possibly to have a shower if I remember correctly. And she came in with both barrels going flat out, saying some horrific, horrible things. But I had the peace of God on me and it was super strange. She was, you know, like a metre away from me. And uh, probably one of the most violent words of any argument I've, I've ever been involved with, um, with the one that you love. And, uh, and, and the Holy Spirit starts speaking through me. And it just started speaking the word of God. No, God doesn't think that about me. Jesus loves me as he loves you. I forgive you as Jesus forgives me. And all of these things just started coming out in between the yelling from one side. And that went on for about, oh, it would have been about 10 minutes to speaking the word of God. And the more I spoke the word of God, the angrier she got. Calling me religious, know it all, or you think you're so good now, and all these type of things. And, uh, and then out of the blue, it's almost like the Holy Spirit just grabbed her, turned her around, and sat her on the bed. And super real, I'm sitting there, what is going on? And, uh, after about a minute of just like, it was like nobody was home. It was just like she was sitting there. You could wave your hand in front of her eyes and there was nobody there. And uh, I didn't realize that God was delivering her. And uh, I sat back and walked back around the edge of the bed. I said, what's going on? Is this going to be round two? And uh, I'm going, oh, God, I know you love her. Just bless my wife. I don't take any of this personally. I know it's not her speaking, and uh, I know the enemy somehow has got a foothold through uh, through anger and and etc. Just deliver her, set her free, Lord. And within about a minute after some this prayer, she just turns around and uh, says, "Oh, Royce." I've been so mean to you, said so many horrible things. I'm so sorry. And it was the first time in three years we've been together that I ever heard her say sorry. And these type of explosive arguments had been happening for quite a while. But it just goes to show the sanctuary of prayer. In that room, the master's bedroom, there was a lot of prayer that was happening. I, I, I was praying every day and every night, learning to, and um, and just giving thanks to the Lord that she'll set free. You know, like we've had some disagreements since then, but brother, those three days of misery were gone. She was completely delivered. Where she'd get that angry, she'd lose herself in it, and now. Now I've got uh, uh, the, the real caramels uh, um, there now, you know. And uh, so I truly, truly believe in the, the closer we, we walk with Jesus ourselves, the more we read the Word of God, the more we, we um, become stronger in the Spirit of the Lord in us, the more, uh, you could say we'll get thicker skin, you know, so we'll become more humble. The little, um, uh, you know, like the fiery darts that come across have no effect on us because the armour of God over us will just, the shield of faith will just knock them away. And, uh, and we're able to have more patience with one another as husband and wife and, you know, with the, with the woes of working and coming home tired and the kids and everything else and... Uh, we're able to overcome it because we've just got the inner peace of Christ that gives it, gives you that boundary of peace that he leaves you, peace he gives you. 
and uh, and just able to see what's really going on spiritually instead of looking at it carnally and letting our guards down. Because when we look at things carnally, then we go by our five senses, you know, which are easily affected by the enemy. And uh, but when we go by what the Word of God says and proclaim it over those situations, bind up that that devil of um, anger and um, command it to leave and, and cease to operate in our home. You know, we can kick the devil out of our home and uh, and we can see that stuff start to disappear. And brother, I just, I just know that the more we take authority over the ground that God's given us and and walk more with, with the Jesus, the more Jesus is seen in us, the more we um, make the right decisions from the right choices by the word of God. And um, as God says, he comes for his word with signs and wonders following. As it says in the book of Mark in chapter 16, you know. So nobody wins the um, bat and ball game of, of disagreements and Sometimes you can never win with some people when they've got the spirit of anger, confusion, and um, uh, um, and and some people that you can come across, you know, they can twist and put a web over you in a way that <coughs> you can't win in, in in any way, and it, and it can become a mental strain, and uh, to a point where you know you can become basically oppressed in the in the relationship and the only way you can break this because it's spiritual is through intercessional prayer and um and and strengthening ourselves and fasting and praying and standing in the gap until god comes comes and sets that person free and uh, so we're able to see the true person uh you know with a house that's been cleansed clean but not left empty so that they can come back with sevenfold, but filled with the Holy Ghost. And then that person set free from anger and confusion and doubt and, and lies and all of these other problems that we see in our relationships. It's if we get the sign of God right in us, then the Holy Spirit and we see, uh, see it spiritually for what it is, and then we can combat it and, uh, and uh, and then we have the victory in it every time, um, but we have to declare and decree over every situation and bind and loose um, the blessings of God over our partners and and uh, and our children and the relationships, either through our home, through marriage, or kids, or for our work relationships, uh, or whatever it happens to be, and. Uh, Put God first, and all things will be added on to you. Um, and um, you know, Christ Jesus in you, the hope of glory. You know, um, that He's in you, and uh, all spiritual wisdom and revelation is in us. And uh, especially when we ask God to uh, reveal it through the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name, that we can have the victory over all all situations of uh, the fruit produced of the word of God in, in those moments. So brother, I know this is a bit of a rattle on, but put God first, fill ourselves daily with the word, lift yourselves up in the spirit, the Holy Spirit, praising, praising his name, worshiping the Lord. And, um, and the, the Holy Spirit, you know, um, gives these gifts to you of speaking in the tongues, or then speak it. And um, you know, and uh, this is all 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 part of the gifts. So, at the end of the day, is the more the more we walk in the Spirit of God through praise and worship, the closer God dwells with us, around us, in us. And the enemy has no foothold over us or our partners, or any one of our children. We have the victory every time through the proclaiming of the word. And uh, thank God we have God that takes care of us when we're at that situation.
and uh, so much love out to you. God bless you. And um, chat soon. Bye for now. Yeah, so resolving conflict in a marriage, it has to start with communication. Wow. That, that just sums it all up, brethren. Uh, it, it? <laughs> Thank you, Brother Royce, for, for sharing that, that testimony. That was a powerful pack testimony. There's so many bits to pull out of that, Brother Andrew. I, I don't know who wants it to pull out a tidbit right now. <laughs> you know, I know. Go ahead, sister. No. Well, you know what? I'll just go ahead and start. Mm -hmm. um, he did speak about listening more than talking. Um, you know, he went to God. That's like the key thing. Mm -hmm. He went to God and God worked it out. So I have a scripture here to share. Mm -hmm. 2 Timothy 2, verses 24 to 26. Mm -hmm. It says, and the servant of the Lord must not strive, but he but be gentle unto all men, mm. apt to teach, patient, in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. If God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth, and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil, mm -hmm. who are taken captive by him at his will. Mercy. Mm -hmm. So this scripture here sums up everything that he was just yeah. talking about. Right, 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 right. right. Full agreement. Yeah. yeah, that that's powerful. Amen. Um, he touched. I know we have lots of positive to pull from it, but some of the things um I see that he talked about, and I love what he uses his own experience yes mm. and that's how we learn right. because sometimes we do he, he used a phrase there where he said he saw that she or sometimes people lose themselves in that anger mm -hmm. yes that rage that comes up mm -hmm. that anger that comes up because that situation happened and you just want to blurt out everything mm. you just mm -hmm. anything that comes to your mind you're not holding back has yes. this ever happened to you yeah. ponder and think about it you know what i mean is this right is this of the lord when you get into that rage into that mode of like listen my man i'm gonna tell you i'm gonna this mm -hmm. i'm gonna that and you just blazing you're just letting loose your leg go in that anger that 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 spirit of anger comes in and take us take you over you know is it right um i noticed he also used the phrase as christian we must have thick skin oh, could you imagine yeah. somebody come to you and telling you some harsh words and you know the worst part about it is is the person who you love is the person who you share these moments of joy and yeah. peace these moments of where you can get into you know your your, your history you right. share those words with the person you love and then that person now saying these harsh words these words that that cuts you mm -hmm. to the core and yet still your thin your skin must be so thick yeah. that you don't respond negatively yeah. you know what i mean you must always be positive only way you can do this is by what having and be very prayer prayer and always <laughs> reading the word yeah. only with prayer and with reading the word of the Lord, that you're able to go through some of these situations. Have this situation ever happened to you, Sister Michelle? You want me to answer now? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember the, uh, um, my, my experience. You know, sometimes you want to say something to me. Mm -hmm. And I just show that we must be, we are, we must have thick skin, mm -hmm. you know. And when my wife says something to me, I get frustrated, I get, or, um, I'm starting to respond mm -hmm. negatively. Mm -hmm. I start to reproach her with words and it, mm -hmm. and it's caused to hurt, you hurt her. Mercy. You know, and sometimes you cannot take back these words because words, they are powerful. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and, and as I said earlier, we can use our words to break on each other. Mm -hmm. And I want to read the scripture. One of the reasons that we are so thick skin is in, in, in Ephesians, we are not thick skin. Mm -hmm. In Ephesians chapter 3, mm -hmm. verse 16, he said that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. Mm -hmm. So in order for us 
to have this thick skin, mm -hmm. not to get offended by every word that's spoken. Mm -hmm. The inner man must be what? Strengthened. Yes, Strengthen the inner man mm -hmm. by the reading and studying of the word of God. Amen. And be what? Pray. Amen. And when you think about it, don't take it personal. Yes. Yes. That's, you think that's not easy, you know. Yeah, yeah. But you have to have that thick skin to say, you know, what the person is saying to me, even though it's some negative words, just be of that peace. Yes. We're talking about peace, you know, yes. having that peace. So if your mind is stayed upon the Lord, you have this peace, don't take it personal. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because we wrestle not against, against flesh, flesh and blood. blood. Amen. Amen. But against Amen. principalities and power. Sister Michelle. So what um is coming to my mind now too as mm -hmm. we're talking, because there's something that he said there. And it takes the Holy Spirit throughout all of what he was saying, mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit. Spirit mm -hmm. was in the midst of it. Amen. Isaiah 59 verse 19 says here, the lower half, it says, when the enemy shall come oh, in yes. like a flood, Amen, my sister. the spirit of the Lord, Lord shall lift Amen. up a standard Amen. against him. Amen. He recognized that he was being baited into an argument mm -hmm. and what did he do that was the spirit of the lord what did he do he got up mm -hmm. and he left mm -hmm. and exited the situation mm -hmm. and he went to his room and then the arguments came to him and then the spirit of the lord came upon him mm -hmm. and he was able to speak words of love Amen. words of affirmation mm -hmm. that the lord loves me and he mm -hmm. loves you mm -hmm. as well yes and mm -hmm. then what did the spirit of the lord do the spirit of the lord turned her around and placed her on the bed deliverance mm -hmm. started to happen because the spirit of the lord was now in that place Amen. and came upon her so much that from the three years that they were together he never heard her apologize mm. that's what the spirit of the lord can do yes. to even humble your husband your wife your child because you're not functioning with self you're yeah. depending upon the word of the Lord and the anger cease. Mm -hmm. The anger cease three days. Come on now. <laughs> three days with silence in the house. <laughs> silence in the house. Right, and the spirit of the Lord came in and he declared and he decreed mm -hmm. and God delivered. Somebody prayed. Amen. And God stopped the war. And God stopped the war. Amen. Amen. And, and as we're looking at it and seeing then, you know, some of these things, do we possess this? Possess it. How do we have it? If we don't have, we can't give what we don't have. How do we attain to that calling? How do we attain to that word where we can say, Lord, I'm struggling in this department, man. My, my, my skin is thin. Mm -hmm. The simplest of words that is said about me harsh. I, I take it on. I'm ready to fight. I'm, I'm ready to argue. I'm, 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 you know what I mean? But I need that righteous indignation only for your word to stand. Mm -hmm. So anything or being said against your word, Lord, I will stand and defend it. But notice here, let's go back to the armor. Mm -hmm. It says, stand therefore, having your loins girded about with truth. And having on the breastplate of righteousness, mm -hmm. how do how do you protect your heart? You know, you 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 interchange the heart and the mind together, and and these negative words are coming that you can't take personal. You can only have the armor on for you don't take these words personal. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because you're saying some harsh words, words that cut, and especially if it's someone whom you love or know these. Maybe you have gone through a situation. And they know using that situation to curse you. And, and it is hurtful. It's hurtful. And for you now <clears throat> to have that armor on so you can't, it, it can't penetrate it. Breastplate of righteousness. The loins girded. Before you move on, that's something key that you said there. They're saying words that, um, that are hurtful. Mm -hmm. and, and going back, let's think about this because 
sometimes when you're here in the moment, you don't only bring up what's happening in the now. Right. You, you may go. Come on now. Come on now. Come on now. Come on now. The treasure box. Come on now. And pull some things out that would want to hit below the belt mm -hmm. of truth mm -hmm. and try to cut you even deeper. Mm -hmm. So we are, we have to be mindful because if we're in a relationship and we're saying, you know what, I forgive you mm -hmm. for what you have done to me in the past. Mm -hmm. How is it resurrecting in a current situation? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Has the person then fully forgiven? No. no. And, and that's why we're talking about the situational room because in the situational room, <laughs> these things would have been worked out. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? As Brother Ricardo says, we have extra pick. You know what I mean? Give a look up. <laughs> oh, <laughs> like troops. We have extra troops. You know what I mean? And things to give. So once we work out and resolve a situation, we 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 left it there. And that should be also part of the rules of the of the situational room. That once the situation has been worked out, we leave it there. You know what I mean? We don't carry it around, we don't have it festering up we, because it has been worked out. Everything is now copacetic, mm, working okay. together for the same common good. And that's why we need to be on the same page, especially husband and wife, children and parents. We need to be having in this worship session. So when, you know, things are work out, we're back to norm. We're back to that uh, plateau where we can say, you know what? We worked it out. Everything is working. We're moving on. And, and, that, and that, takes, that takes a lot. Mercy. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. it, it really and truly does because even listening to the message, he also mentioned that sometimes a relationship or the spouse can twist things, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And then you feel like you're covered in a web and mm -hmm. then there is confusion and yes. you yourself are feeling oppressed mm -hmm. in the situation because they might say with their lips and say, you know what, I'm not going to bring it up again. I'm not going to do it. But then something else happens and boom, you're in, in the same hot mess as you were from before. Mm -hmm. And it's really for us to be able to recognize that it is a spiritual battle because you can get sucked into it, brethren. Yes. You can easily get sucked into it. So you have to know where you are standing mm -hmm. because then the enemy would want to knock you out at your knees and then have you to fall. Yes. And then everybody's separated. And especially when children are involved and now the children are looking at mom and dad, is this how we're supposed to solve our the problems, problems. Yes. Is this how we're supposed to solve our issues. Yes. We know situations um, where we've experienced where husband and wife, they're in separate rooms, mm -hmm. right? Yes. They're in separate rooms. And one is upstairs, one is on the net, left wing, one is on the right wing. <laughs> and the children are experiencing these kind of situations. Cool. And the, the, they're not coming together for family vacations. They're, they're being separated. So there is a war to destroy families. There's a war to destroy mm -hmm. marriages. Mm -hmm. And we really need to open up our eyes and get that discernment to see when the enemy is trying to come in. Amen. Because it's war, but we have to wage peace. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. And, and that's what it's all about. But talking about peace, let's even look at verse 15 because we have to have this gospel. And this gospel brings us what? Peace. peace. Amen. This gospel brings us peace. In Jesus' name. So my sister, go ahead. Yes. So I wanted to, you know, mention Galatians 5, verse 22 and 23. Mm -hmm. It says, but the fruit of the spirit Come is love, mm -hmm. joy, peace, long-suffering, mm -hmm. gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Mm -hmm. Against such, there is no law. So long suffering is the one that we tend to run from. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and we see in the testimony here, you know, it was for three years right. that he was suffering long, oh, just yes. like how the Lord suffers long with us. Yes. You know, today we say we are sorry, tomorrow we go back and do the same old sin. Mm. Yes. So we need to be suffering yes. long with Very each true. other. And not only that, mm -hmm. husband and wife, you know, they say don't let the sun go down on your anger. Yeah. Just know if you're sleeping in the same bed and you're looking, you know, husband is, is 
turning his back to the wife and the wife turning her back to the husband, guess who's in the middle? Mm -hmm. The devil. The demon of strife. So, so as we're learning then and we're learning to apply yeah. the word of the Lord to our lives, you know, maybe in a family situation, mm -hmm. maybe in your own personal life. Yes. You know, how do you resolve your conflicts? How do you resolve your situation? Are, the, are, are these points that we're talking about this morning, can they be applied to you? I mean, yes. you have possibly heard it all. You have possibly done it all. But these new ways of thinking then are maybe you have heard it before and said before. How do you apply it? How do you apply it, Sister Michelle? If you and I should get in a conflict, how do you apply it? I know what you typically do, <laughs> and I'm going to share with the audience. Um, so, you know, there are situations sometimes, as I said, I'm a little bit taller than Sister Michelle. So, bit. yeah, so we don't always see eye to eye on certain things because <laughs> I'm a little bit taller. So, <laughs> so what happened, you know, what I recognize she always do is she would pray, and go to the Lord. And my brethren, my sister, my brothers, I recognize that every time she prays and she goes to the Lord, the Holy Spirit would come and arrest me. Handcuffs. You understand? Arrest me. And it would bring me in a, a situation where I would even say, you, you prayed, didn't you? And she would be there laughing. And I'm saying, you prayed, didn't you? And then, you know what I mean? Because I know. I know when that tugging comes. I know when the Holy Spirit comes and say, my son, this my son that uh for example i just hear one situation as we're you know we're, we're pondering and thinking mm -hmm. so we went we all went to church and you know we went to church with the children and everything mm -hmm. and i got home and i decided man i'm gonna go lay down till it's they they prep the table and you know everything is ready then they'll call me and we'll eat and so the children are doing their thing michelle is there with them and you know i decided man i'm gonna go lay down for a five minute till they're ready all said and done, the Holy Spirit came, arrested me, and said, what are you doing? You know what I mean? What are you doing? And the Holy, me and the Holy Spirit is there, and the Holy Spirit told me, get up now and go help. Mm -hmm. Go and help. So I went now, I'm there now in the kitchen, I'm big smile on my face, like, yeah, yeah. I was just kind of like, you know, changing off or something. And then I look at her and I'm like, you prayed, didn't you? You prayed. And then she goes on to tell me, yeah, I prayed and I asked the Lord to, 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 to talk to your son. Go talk to your son. I did. Go I talk did. to your like son. That. Right? And I'm like, and I'm like, and this is not once or twice, but different scenarios, different situations where she prayed and the Holy Spirit comes and, and bids me. And, and so it is that we are to be learning from each other. Amen. That if we are very prideful, you know, things will work out. Things will just complement and we'll just complement each other. I don't know if Brother Ricardo, Sister um, Samantha, have gone through a scenario in their relationship, in their walk, where they have to be like, Lord, you know what? You take the case and take the pillow too. You know what I mean? <laughs> you want no part to do it. You're like, Lord, take the case and the pillow. You know what I mean? Now you take it the place and give me the pillow. No, take everything in charge. Mm -hmm. As there a situation happen that you guys are willing to open up, share? Because that's what this ministry is about. It's about realness. It's about you sharing yeah. and sharing your experience because we are learning from these things. Amen. Yeah. My, my wife get on my nerves. I don't want to talk. No, <laughs> Even though it's silence, it's also a language, you know? Yeah. So, so yeah. I yeah. have to pray. If my wife is upset, I'm praying. And sometimes we even go to bed hungry. And we know the scripture Bible says, do not go, let do not let the sun go down on your eyes. Mm -hmm. You know, so these are the things that we face in the marriage circle. You know, and we have to be real because others yeah. out there they are struggling, mm -hmm. and we who are getting victory over these little urgence, we can help others so it can be beneficial for their marriage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> well, well, you know, I mean, I just uh, there was an instance, right, where we had a disagreement, mm -hmm. and it was a case where you know he well he was upset at me, so he was the one that was ignoring me and was not talking to me. Mm -hmm. But but I technically I should have been the one that's mad at him, but I wasn't. You know, <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. I'm so doing, I was yeah. so I was doing everything that I would normally do, prepare his lunch do all of that I did the laundry you know fold the clothes when he came in and saw me folding his clothes that's when it struck him mm -hmm. he, he was like wow you really let me feel bad <laughs> <laughs> yes yes these are the things um a marriage is a blessing mm -hmm. it is um especially when the two two um, parties were godly they love the lord my mm -hmm. wife I'm telling you, my wife treat me like a, a, a king. You are. And it cost me one to treat me about the, the queen. Which you know? <laughs> I'm telling you, um, when I go to work, every day my wife will cook with me, you know, because she works from home. And, and I'm telling you, she treat me so well, before I even open the door, my wife put in the food on the table. Mm -hmm. So it, it provoked me sometimes when I even be ungrateful. These are the things that struck me. Mm. The Holy Spirit showed me that you're ungrateful. You're the lady, your wife, your lovely wife, you're doing all of these things for you. And, and it's it's a humbling experience, you know, mm -hmm. because if if I get my wife mad, I always say, honey, do not feed off of my negative energy. You're supposed to be the one that can help me. But do you know, as a husband, I want to read this mm. for the husband of the year. Husband of the year. In Adventist Home, page 99, he said, all who enter into matrimonial relations with a holy purpose, he said, the husband to obtain pure affections of a woman's heart. Mercy. Mm -hmm. Come on now. 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 Listen to wife. What's the wife's duty to the husband? Because remember, the wife is to help me, right? The helper. The wife to soften mm. and improve her husband's character. Mm. Wow. Yes. What? The wife to soften and improve her husband's character. And what else? And to give it completeness. Wow. Mm. In, the, in the married relation, the wife is always the more tender, loving. Us as husband, we more, we're more <laughs> rough, you know. <laughs> but, but the wife, one of the one of the part of the wife's duty is to soften mm -hmm. and to improve her husband's character and to give it completeness. That's why God said, "Man should not be alone." Amen. And God gave the husband a help me. Mm -hmm. The years that the husband is lacking, the wife comes in. And the years that the wife is lacking, the wife, the husband comes in. Are you with me? And we must encourage each other. We must also compliment. compliment. Come on now. Mm. All right. Mm. <laughs> it's like you're cooking some food, and you know what I mean. You need the onion. You know what I mean. You need the the the, the thyme, the, the scallion, the garlic. Everybody just comes together. And come on now. Come on. And that's how the relationship. You know what I mean? When you think of the arm of God, how it complements our body. And notice too, this armor is not one fit all. Mm, yeah. it, 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 each armor is customized. Amen. You know what I mean? Yes. It's a customized order. It's a personal or armor. <laughs> you know what I mean? So my armor might not fit you. <laughs> You understand? Right. Your armor might not fit me, but yet still, it's that one maker. Yes, Christ. Yes. You understand? Yeah. Christ is our yes. armor. And it's a personal relationship that we need to have with the Lord, with our armor, so we are able to gird up our loins. So we talk about girding up our loins. We talk about peace. We talk about the helmet, how we ought to be guard, guarding the avenues of our thoughts, our, our mind, our hearts, because by what we're beholding, that's what we're seeing. I'm wondering, though, this armor, I guess part of the armor, part of the helmet, probably have something that protects your eyes. 
Hmm. You know what I mean? Because I could picture a helmet, okay. and, right? And and, no, and it has and it has it, it has some eye protection as well. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Maybe you, you you can see maybe some slit in where the front section of the mm -hmm. the the, 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 uh, the, the helmet yeah. is, yeah. And, and it covers your cheekbone, it covers your face, mm -hmm. and only your eyes you you can see. Yeah. Oh. And you know that the helmet also it, it protect um the destruction. Mm -hmm. So the helmet oh, cost yeah, yeah. the helmet cost the helmet the helmet cause you to focus, mm -hmm. you know, so not to not be distracted. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mercy. Yeah. And, and that's what we need to do in our relationship. We really need to focus. Yes. You know what I mean? Why did I get married to this person? Mm -hmm. You know, we went through the the, 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 the uh, counseling. We went together. We, we 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 decided. Listen, this is the way we're going. This is what the Lord has put us together for. Of course, we are human, and we're coming from different backgrounds. We mm -hmm. have different situations. So we're, we're you know, what I mean, there's always going to be something. But majority of the time, majority of the time, we are to be pressing together, Amen. praying together. That's why Joshua mm -hmm. says, you know, as for me and my house. We will serve the Lord and serving the Lord, we're serving with gladness, we're serving with joy, we're serving with the entire armor upon us so we can have that peace. Amen. And, and we need the peace. My mind is just going on a little tidbit that you know that you can get to, to gather that that peace. Mm -hmm. And yeah. And oh, so what are, as Brother Ricardo was saying, little chups, even a little, a, a little kiss, and, oh, no. and you know, saying, I, I love you, and, yeah. and hugs, and, yeah. and you're you know what, in let, let's, let's ask for a demonstration of that, sister, hey. so, because many of, you know, individuals who are married, maybe a long time, you know, I mean, sometimes we need a refresher course, and as to keep the relationship, as Brother Ricardo says, fresh. To keep your armor clean, we must always. So we're going to ask Brother Ricardo and Sister Samantha, indeed, to, yes. to, 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 okay. to show us, you know, a demonstration of a little, you know what I mean, a little warm embrace, maybe a rub on the shoulder to say, yes. honey, so, so, honey, so, I'm there. So, so the wives, they need, they need affection from their husband, you know? Nice. And, and and we as husband, when we marry our, our wives, we tell them how we love them, what they're beautiful, they look like the sunshine, mm. they look like the limit of the valley. And, and then we get to the marriage, you know, we don't say these things, you know? We, we, we don't even help the wife anymore. And we don't even hug our wife. And the wife is contemplating, I wonder if my husband loves me. He doesn't nice. give me flowers anymore. He <laughs> you know, don't even write me under the nice poem. You know? Come on now. These things, the agitation, the frustrate your wife, you know, and why start to contemplate? I wonder if you see somebody else, you know, because mm -hmm. of, of my band, yeah. need, you know, kiss our wife, you know, and say, honey, you look so good, you, know? you smell like the living at the valley, you know? <laughs> <laughs> because why, the, why they love these nice words from their husband, yeah. special husband, when you do these things, I'm telling you, you're gonna see you get the king treatment. Come on now, <laughs> treatment, brother, yeah, getting the king treatment. So, young people who are watching. <laughs> I hope you're taking notes for those who are single planning to get married. These are some of the things, you know, having a situation in room, being yes. able to talk, communicate, yes. being able to, you know what I mean, hug your wives and, you know, give them a warm embrace, yes. letting them know, hey, I still love you, you know, let's yes. continue to date, having a date night. So there are various of things that you can look at your personal life. But when you look at your spiritual life, these are the same relationship that you need to, to continue in. Yeah. When you become a Christian, when yeah. you become, you know, into the word of the Lord, you don't just, you know, says, okay, I got baptized and that's it. No, right. you right. continue to grow, right. you continue to flourish in the wisdom and in the grace and the admonition of the Lord and, and allowing the Holy Spirit to lead you step by step, day by day. And for those of you who are single, remember, it's also a personal thing. Yeah. So don't think because you're single, I don't have a husband or a wife to hug up and kiss up. No, that's where the Lord comes in. When your mother and father forsake you, if you want a husband, you want a wife, let the Lord be that for you. The first love is Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. First love. The first love. Amen. Amen. You are contemplating marriage I have um a concept for you in Adventist home page 45 paragraph two it said examine carefully to see if your married life will be happy or harmonious and unwreck and unwreck and let the question be raised will this union help me even more hmm. will it increase my love for God mm. and will it enlarge my sphere of 
usefulness in this land. This wow. question must be raised for those who are contemplating marriage. Yes. Mercy, mercy. What a list, yes. my brother. And, and these are the things that as we're learning, we're teaching and sharing. And as my brother says, rightfully, contemplate it. Mm -hmm. You know, is this going to be drama? Is this, this relationship going to mm -hmm. draw me? And sometimes we enter into a relationship, we know it, this is not going anywhere. You know, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's going to draw us down. <laughs> you know I mean? The red flag. Yeah. Red flag. And the worst part is you did not approach the situation prayerfully. <laughs> you know what I mean? And that's where it's at. You have to um, approach the situation prayerfully and allow the Lord to lead. Amen. You know, is this going to be a flourishing relationship? Man, I can't wait. I can't. You know what I mean? You're, you're excited for the journey, you're, for the new, you know what I mean? You're, you're ready. By trusting in the Lord, the Lord will work it out. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' name. We know time has yeah, right. far spent. And we definitely have to close down. But I hope that you have learned some things mm -hmm. about peace and having peace, having that thick skin, having yes. long suffering. I hope you have, you know, contemplated where in my home could be that situational room for my family, my husband, my wife, my children, whoever might come. In. Oh, is your home a situational room for the community mm -hmm. where people can come to you and say, brother so-and-so, sister so-and-so, you know, my, my things are not working or this or that. You know, is your life like that, you know, thick skin where God can use you, you know, to, 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 to cut out and to get them ready to be armored up for what's ahead? Are you working on behalf of the Lord. You know, so much things to ponder, so much things to think about, but I hope that you had peace this morning Amen. in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And don't remember, don't forget, you know, it's not peace of the armor you have to put on. You have to put on the whole armor. Amen. 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 I don't know if you have a final word or thought there, um, sister and brother, in Jesus' name. Yeah, my final word for those who are contemplating marriage and also those who are already married, um, my final advice for you, I mean, Joshua, Joshua was going, Joshua about to lead God's people, millions of people, different personality and different attitude. And Joshua was very successful because Joshua followed the word. In Joshua chapter 1, verse 8, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate in it day and night. This is the, if you, this is um, God's word covered consequences, right? Mm -hmm. But now, how can we meet the blessing? This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate in it day and night, that thou may observe to do, to do all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous. So when we meet the condition, listen up. For, thou, for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and thou shalt have good success. Mm -hmm. If we follow the word of God, our marriage can be prosperous. And also, we will have good success. Mm -hmm. It will be successful if we follow the blueprint of Amen. the word of God. Mm -hmm. Amen. And then my final words are, you know, it doesn't matter the situation or the relationship, whether it's mother and daughter, it's with your aunt, your uncle, grandparents, whomever, co-workers, whatever the relationship is. Mm -hmm. You know, whenever there's conflict, go to God first. Amen. It's always God first and God will, will lead and direct you as to what to do, what to say, how to address it. Mm -hmm. So it's always to God first and then the next step would be to actually have communication with the person that you're having conflict with. Yes. Amen. Amen. And, and what I just want to end with before we go back to, to the headquarters is that, you know, we have to think about ourselves. We need to, to declutter ourselves mm -hmm. and see what is really putting us in this state of mind mm -hmm. and really go to the Lord and ask the Lord to help us, whether it be healing from past events, past relationships, how we've been treated mm -hmm. in the past to be able to put this at the foot of the throne and ask the Lord Amen. to really heal you because you may be missing a complete blessing. Mm -hmm. The Lord has place in front of you mm -hmm. because you're so caught up on things that have previously happened wow. so let's go into our closet let's declutter Mercy. take out that anger that pride that selfishness mm -hmm. woe is me the, the panic the anxiety the fear let's get rid of all of those things mm -hmm. and allow the lord to come in to use us 
to be helpmates in our marriage and in our family life mm -hmm. because God is able to do it. Mm -hmm. And we're going to close off in prayer because I know at the headquarters they are waiting to come up with the word is going to be powerful today. Amen. Amen. I hope everybody knows what the title is. Amen. Uh, Amen. Brother Amen. Be Amen. And, and God is so good and mighty and so powerful as we wrap up the Sabbath school and we, we're pondering. You know what I mean? As, as as our dear sister Michelle said, it's time to do a spring cleaning yes. in yeah. fall. <laughs> you must go in your closet yeah. and start to get rid of the things yeah. that are not working. Yeah. You know what I mean? Declutter. Yeah. You know what I mean? We have to declutter. God is about to come and he's calling us to finish the work. Are yeah. you ready? Yeah. Are you excited about it? We're living in the last days. Are you excited about it? Yeah. If you are not yeah. excited, then definitely approach the mercy seat and say, Lord, I need to get excited. Yeah. I want to be excited about your second coming. Yeah. Share the good news of salvation for yeah. those who are there, who are longing. You know what I mean? For that breakthrough. God is going to work something out. Just be patient and do your part. Amen. Do your part in starting to clean house. Start in the name of Jesus. So as we Amen. pray, we know that God is able in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, you know, you let the visitor pray for us, yes? Amen. 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 <laughs> Before I pray, what does it take to be free? <laughs> Father in heaven, we thank you so much for this discussion. We thank you so much, oh God. We ourselves have, have learned as well. And I pray that many of our brothers and sisters who are watching, Lord, and those who are going to watch in the future, they can also be get be blessed by this presentation, oh God, and to apply these principles to their marriage so they can be successful and also prosperous. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 To God be the glory. So we're giving God praise. We're giving God thanks. Amen. And we're gonna go right um into an intermission and just you know, to God be the glory. We'll see you in a moment in Jesus' name. We'll definitely see you in a moment. And I believe they're 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 gonna go straight into the song of meditation okay. with Isabella. And we're gonna go right into the word. And after the word, brethren, um, we're going to have our donation part of the service, and then we'll go into the testimony portion. So please. Stay tuned. Continue to send the link out. Amen. Send the link out to your friends and to your family. Amen. And we're going to welcome Isabella, who will be doing the song of meditation for us Amen. over at the headquarters. Welcome and happy Sabbath, Isabella. Praise the name of the Lord. It's been a blessing. It's always good to, to see the young people singing for the Lord. Amen. Go right ahead, Isabella. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Today's hymn will be coming from hymn 422, Marching to Zion. Come we that love the Lord and let our joys be known. Join in a song with sweet accord. Join in a song a seed accord and thus surround the throne and thus surround the throne we're marching to zion beautiful beautiful zion we're marching upward to Zion, the beautiful city of God. Let those who refuse to sing, who never knew our God, but children of the heavenly King, but children of the heavenly King may speak their joys abroad, may speak their joys abroad. We're marching to Zion, beautiful, beautiful Zion. We're marching 
Reaching upward to Zion, the beautiful city of God, the hill of Zion yields a thousand sacred sweets before we reach the heavenly fields before we reach the heavenly fields or oh, walk the golden streets or oh, walk the golden streets we're marching to zion beautiful beautiful zion we're marching upward to zion the beautiful city of god then let our songs abound and every tear be dry we're marching through Emmanuel's ground we're marching through Emmanuel's ground to fairer worlds on high to fairer worlds on high we're marching to Zion beautiful beautiful Zion we're marching upward to Zion, the beautiful city of God. We're marching to Zion, beautiful, beautiful Zion. We're marching upward to Zion, the city of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Sister Bella. And at this moment, we're definitely going to have Brother Patrick um, come with the sermon, but we'll definitely say a word of prayer. Amen. So let's bow our heads where we are and have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we are so grateful for your, your grace and your love and your mercy, Lord. Lord, we're not deserving, Lord, of your love, of your grace towards us, Lord. Father, many of us have sinned and come short. All have come short, Lord, of your, your goodness, of your law, of your standards, but Jesus, your blood, your blood that was shed, Lord, is able to forgive us, to wipe all the guilt, all the stains. Lord, we thank you. Our Father, it's not by accolades or our PhD or our works, but it's by your love. It's by your goodness. Some of us, Lord, has fallen this week and came short. But Jesus, here we are asking you for forgiveness for all our sins. And we thank you, Lord, for your mercy because the accuser of the brethren would swallow us up. But dear God, you have been so good. As your word says, you're faithful and just to forgive us of all our sins. So help us, Lord, to walk in the path we ought to walk. Help us, Lord, to love one another and let go. Help us, Lord, to surrender all unto you. I pray, Lord of hosts, that as we come together as family, as a body of Christ, from across, online, in various places, Lord, we invite your holy presence to be here with us. We pray, Lord, that the word, word indeed will be rooted in our hearts. And Lord, it will not sit comfortably, but I pray, Lord, that the word will, will smite down the strongholds of our hearts. 
I pray, dear God, that the word will hit us in places, Lord, it has not, uh, we have not been touched before, Lord, that truly, Lord, will come to, tr to repentance that as we leave this place today, Lord, we will not be bench warmers. Lord, as it says Moses preach, Noah, Noah preached for 120 years. Help us not to be complacent. Help us to take heed that Jesus, you are coming soon. Help us to take heed of the warning, Lord, and not be caught up in the things of this world, things that are not important. But Lord, there are many to be saved salvation lord of those in high places the celebrities our families our parents our spouses i pray dear god that your word O oh god will trouble our hearts will set up a fire under our feet that we will go forth with your gospel will forsake the things of this world that will take time off from our lives to do your will to do your work so please lord the laborers are few but the harvest is ready. Please, oh God, you've given us sermons. You've given many of your people visions and dreams that, Lord Jesus, you're going to come as a thief in the night. I pray, oh God, that jealousy you will wipe away. That I pray, oh God, any anger or emotional sickness, Father, you will, anything we harbor against our neighbors will put away all malice and will come together because Satan, Lord, is seeking whom he may devour. So, Father, I pray that you chain up every demon in hell, O God, from Revelation 20, with that great chain in his hand. I pray, O God, that you bind up Satan and his serpents and his angels. Lord, all those angels, Lord, that's tabernacle around your congregation in places of your churches in Africa, in Jamaica, in the States, in the U.S., Lord, in Jamaica, in, in Trinidad, in St. Lucia, that come into your church, all the witchcraft, oh God. I pray, Father, that you come in like a mighty rushing wind and you eradicate all power of darkness. And Father, indeed, your presence, your glory, Lord, you will shine your light down, oh Father, and dispel every incantation of spirits sent against your people that, Lord, your people will be empowered, that you'll pour out your Holy Spirit, O oh God. So I pray, O oh God, as the message comes, that, Lord, you'll set this place on fire, that each and every one of us, Lord, I pray, Father, that the words coming from Brother Patrick's mouth, you send forth fire upon his lips, that the sword, which is the word, O oh God, will cut down, cut down, Lord, the strongholds against your people, that will never be the same. So please, I pray, lead him, Lord. Touch his mind. Holy Spirit, we invite you in this place with power, with might. I pray you open the roofs. May you bring down every distraction. Lord, let there be reverence in your sanctuary. I pray that each and every mind, O oh Lord, that is in your sanctuary will be focused upon your word. That the enemy will not distract us. No thought will come. No stress or worry, but Lord will give you our undivided attention. And I pray that your angels will tabernacle with us. And may you keep back every force of darkness as your manservant comes to preach. I pray your anointing will fall afresh upon him. Touch his mind, his emotions, his, 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 his strength, I pray, will be renewed in you. As you said, a youth, uh, the youth will be renewed like the eagles, O Lord. So I pray, Father in heaven, that you have your own way. And your armor will be upon him and each and every person here. Please, Lord Jesus, our Lord and Savior, may you be high and lifted up and exalted as we wait upon you. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Children. Thank you so much for those who are watching from different countries around the world. God has been so good. And uh, we usually say, fasten your seatbelts, because God is about to do something powerful and amazing.
We just want to welcome you here in the sanctuary. We know we have a little bit of situation today getting together, but God is able. I know the Sabbath school was beaming from upstairs and it was live. And I seen Brother Andrew was asking Samantha and her husband to, you know, show and demonstrate. But I was about to call on them and say, you demonstrate. I thought, <laughs> you know, but <laughs> praise God. Praise God. I'm just so thankful and grateful to be in his sanctuary. So we are so happy that you're here. We just want to welcome you. And we have Brother Ricardo here, as you have seen in the Sabbath school. And you heard his testimony. And you don't want to go anywhere. Even though the program is going to be a little bit shorter today, we got to be out of the sanctuary by 4 o'clock. But when you come to Button to Christ, you have to come preparing. Especially if you are in the sanctuary, we come prepare to fast at all times. We have lunch provided. We know that if you need a refreshment, you can always go downstairs. But today is really a high day in the Lord. A very, very powerful high day. My week was really touching because there was a lot of people calling, asking, could I be prayed for? Could you pray for me? I need to be delivered. And we see in the hand of God work during this week. So we are so grateful. Um, if I could just ask Brother Ricardo just to come up with me one second. I know your wife is outside, but just so that everybody will see and know that he's in the sanctuary today. He's at Button to Christ. Welcome, my brother. How are you? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I know you don't have a mic. They are bringing you a mic. You know, you, know, you waited for this moment to come to Button to Christ. <laughs> so, brethren, you, you have to hear his testimony. I was just blown away. I was thinking about your testimony even last night when I was sleeping, you know, because the enemy had you locked away for a long time, and the Lord gave you all this vision that he's going to release you from being incarcerated in the jail, and the Lord says, I'm going to let you out, and you were saying, how is this possible, God, and the Lord let you out, you know, <laughs> you know the power of prayer. You know, we're so happy to have you here on a Sabbath. And we know we're going to be sharing your testimony right after the divine hour. So we're asking our viewers to hold on to your seat. Wait, you know what I mean? And, you know, you will get to meet his wife. And, and we have to talk, even off the camera, how they met. It's the divine providence. How the Lord spoke to you and... I recognize that you even propose and say you're going to marry her even before you met her in person. You know, <laughs> you know this is just unbelievable. <laughs> so your life is a miracle. Did you recognize that? Yes, yes. Praise God. You recognize that your life is a miracle. And if your life is a miracle then, is it going, is it going to be without trouble? No, we know that always going to, um, Satan is always on our heels. So we're always going to have trouble. A lot of Christians think you give your life to Jesus and you're going to have a smooth sail. No. Yeah. So I think that's kind of, God's people need to know that. That when you go down in the watery grave, it does not mean that everything is gone from your life. And here I am now, I'm good. I'm going to get a good job. Everybody's going to be happy with me. It's never yeah. stopped. So, my brother, we, we are so happy to have you here. Thank you. And I know God have a plan for you. And those who are watching, just make sure you send the link out and <laughs> tell everybody, you got to get on to Button to Christ today because you got to hear this young man testimony. He's on fire for the Lord. Mercy. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much. We'll talk. Right. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God is awesome and powerful. Amen. God is awesome and powerful. We, we want to get right into the word. We know the time is late. But God is able to carry us through the word. So 
I'm just so grateful and thankful for the Lord. Um, do you know what the title is for today's sermon? Anyone that was watching the title this morning, what's the title of today's service? Hello, I'm not hearing. Is your room booked? Heavenly Mansion. The question is going to be asked, how do you book your room? How do you book your mansion? Do you believe, are you comfortable down here? So it doesn't matter. Are you heaven bound? Are you? Well, I'm going to share some scriptures with you today. And they are very simple scriptures that the Lord has used. And I want to let you know that it was on a Thursday. The preparation day was coming on Friday. And he was going to go to the grave. So here it is now. On the Thursday. He met with his disciples to encourage them. And I want to share some scriptures with you. To say that. The enemy knew that the time was short. And God's people were intense distress. They were troubled on every side. I don't know if we are troubled today. Christ is coming, but God's people are so comfortable that they are not seeing the signs that there's rumors of wars. Matthew 24 is being fulfilled. The disciples, if they were here this moment, they would be on fire. They would be in all the communities preaching the gospel because they know that the time is short. But it seems like Christians are sleeping nowadays. We, are not, we don't think that we are heaven bound. It seems like our rooms our book down here. We're not thinking that we're pilgrims passing through and we need to, here is a temporal home. We don't understand this. So, God has given me this word today. I'm going to pray right now. Would you bow your heads with me? As we pray and invite the Spirit of the Lord to come in, with more power because today is a high day in Zion today the Lord wants to open the minds of his people around the globe he wants to wake up souls and let them know that Christ is at the door he's coming very very soon it seems like a lot of people don't believe. Father want to shake us out of the comfort zone so that we will prepare. We won't be like the five foolish virgins that have our lamps, but there's no extra oil. God want to prepare us and to gear us up for what is coming. Because his coming is closer than when we first believe. So Father God of glory, surround this sanctuary. Surround all the viewers from around the world. In St. Lucia, in Kent, UK, all over. Father God in Jamaica. In Canada, many people are watching. Oh, God of glory, the God whom we serve and worship, hide me now beneath the cross and let Christ alone be seen, high and lifted up. Thank you so much, oh God, because you're going to do a mighty work today and your name will be exalted. And your people will be ready 
thank you so much. This is my humble prayer. In Jesus Christ's name, I pray. Amen. Remember, Tuesday, the Lord has given me the word on Sardis. And the Lord just reminded me that Sardis was this church who needed encouragement. There was nothing good about Sardis. And God has given us all these messages to wake us up. That he's at the door and he's calling his people. I want to go to the first scripture, John 13, verses 1 to 5. And I want you to really zoom in with me. Black out all the distraction. Because Christ is coming. And he's coming for people who are ready to go home. Whether we are ready or not, he's coming. I'm telling you, he's coming. So hear what was going on. Hear what was going on during this time when he was speaking to his disciples. Chapter 13, it says, Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he... He should depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved his own, which were in this world, he loved them unto the end. So Jesus knew that the time is come, and he started to prepare his people. He's given us the word now, and he's preparing us now. Hear what verse 2 says. And it says in verse 2, And supper being ended, the devil having now put unto him the, into the heart of Judas in Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. So the hour has come now where Jesus was going to be betrayed. So it brought disappointment. Go to verse 3 and hear what it says. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hand, and that he was come from God and went to God. He knows that everything is over now. And his disciples was in awe. Could you believe? They thought that Jesus was going to last forever, his kingdom. Discouragement was creeping in. What is going on? He riseth from supper and laid aside his garments and took a towel and girded himself like he tied around his waist and girt himself up. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded. So I, I want you to imagine with me then. He was around his disciples and he wanted to demonstrate the love that needs to remain. He girded himself and as the king, he knelt down and washed their feet. Even Judas, who was going to betray him. And the, the towel was so long that he was able to use the towel to wipe and dry the feet. What a love. He was about to be betrayed. And he started to demonstrate one of the most powerful methods of love. Wash the dirty feet. Lord have mercy. I tried to comprehend. Lord, I wanted to go to the next scripture here. Go to the same chapter, thir to verse 36. Go to verse 36, and then we're going to jump back to 21. I'm showing you this, that this is powerful. 
Simon was the disciple who was always there. And hear what Simon Peter said in that hour. Simon said unto him, Lord, whither goest thou? Like, where are you going to go? You say your work is done. I thought you are going to stay with us. Jesus answered him, Whither I go, thou canst not follow me now, but thou shalt follow me afterwards. Lord of mercy. What's going on here? You will follow me afterwards? Disappointment was coming on them. They were troubled. Jesus was the one who did the miracles. Trouble is on human souls today. We need Jesus more than ever before. Souls are worried about the earthly things. The disciples were with Jesus. He was giving them a hint that I'm going to die and I'm going to be risen and I'm going to go home. Hello. I'm telling you, something was going on. Their soul was troubled. You're going to go and say we're going to come afterwards? They can't comprehend it. They can't get it. They can't get it. Go to verse 21. Go back down to verse 21. I'm going to show you something. When Jesus has just said, he was troubled in the spirit and testified saying, Verily, verily, I say unto you that one of you shall betray me. That's more dis discouragement. We're all in the church and somebody's heart is not right. The heart was more troubled. Are you troubled today? Jesus is about to come and the church is sleeping. You're watching from around the world. The Lord is here. Hallelujah. He uttered and said somebody in this group is going to say something bad about me. We talk about coming to church and have people gossiping and we get discouraged. It's going to happen. It happened to Jesus. Judas was going to betray him. Because he had open doors. If you have open doors and you're coming to church, the devil is going to use you. When I say open doors, he have jealousy, greed in his closet. In his mind, in his temple, he wasn't all clean. The door was way wide open. God is asking you today, how is your door? Do you have skeleton in your closet? Is there something that you need to give to Jesus so that the devil can't use you to betray the Lord? God is asking you, because this is deep. He's wrestling. He's asking you personally. You're watching right now from around the world. And Jesus is saying, is everything okay with you? Is all well? What are you troubled with? Is it getting that mansion on earth instead of booking your room in heaven? How do you book your room anyway? How do you book your mansion in heaven anyway? Listen, the trouble did not stop there. Go down to verse 20, 38, Brother Sean. Go to verse 38. Lord have mercy. Hear what verse 38 says. Jesus answered him. Peter keep talking still. And said, Lord, I will die for you. Lord, I love you. A lot of us love to testify what the Lord has done for me. I'm a good Christian. Peter was showing up. And that's when the Lord says, come on, Peter. Jesus answered him in verse 38 and says, Will thou lay down thy life for my sake? He said, Peter, all you're saying you will die for me. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, The cock shall not crow till thou hast denied me three times. It's not by flesh. It's not by power or by might. It's by the word of God. It's not by your dwelling. 
It's not myself. Why am I Christian? It's not what I'm doing. It's what the Lord is doing with you. You got to remember, I preach many sermons about Peter. Peter is a superstar. He's the star of the movie, you could say. Because Peter is always talking. He's the one that walks on water. And the Lord gave him a sad news and said, Peter, Satan has asked for you by name. He knows you. He knows all of us by name. You think he don't know your name? He asked for you by name and he wants to sift you like a wheat. You know what sifting means? You ever have a strainer and you sift? Listen, he, he wants to sift you like a wheat. But he said, I've prayed for you, Peter. And when you're converted, encourage the brethren. Peter wasn't converted, but he thought. A lot of people come to church and we think that we are okay. And we do lip service. After all, Peter healed. After all, Peter did done many powerful work. And he felt good. And he said, Lord, I will die for you. He don't understand that the flesh is weak. We can say anything, but we can't do it without the power of God. We don't understand Jesus. We don't understand. Jesus continue to encourage them. You see, when we are going on vacation, we always book hotel rooms that are all inclusive and for those who are rich in means and they book in luxurious resort. All of these two, good only and it's temporal. All of this only good for a time. All these nice places just for pleasure. Do you know that there is a heavenly mansion that awaits that you need a room in order to enter. You need a booking. But how can you book? It's always easy to go on the line and go on the internet and book where you're going to stay. But how can you book this room in heaven? What do you have to do? Think about it. The booking is guaranteed when you spend time in daily seeking the Lord through his word. Prior and listening to his Holy Spirit. We must daily wash our robes in the blood of the Lamb to remove every deformity in our characters. Hotels can cancel our booking. They can just move you off the list because they are overbooked. Or you might miss your flight or other reason. However, the heavenly booking, hallelujah, can only be canceled by you. You don't understand. When you book your flight to glory, the Lord said the Lamb's book of life. Our name is written in it. Only us through sin. And as God appeals to the disciples, He washed their feet. He demonstrates how much He loves them. What a love. He sees that their heart is troubled. He sees that something is not right. Only we can cancel that booking if we fail to pack our spiritual bag to eternity. We spend a great part of our lives doing everything else while neglecting our relationship with Christ. Heavenly mansions are only available for those who, who live righteously. 
The cost of the room is total love. Obedience and obedience to God. We must, must ensure our, in our daily life that we book and stay book. We got to stay book by feasting on the word of God. I want to go to chapter 14 and show you something here. This was the moment that the Lord seen his disciples troubled. They have the word. They had Jesus, but they did not understand the power of the Lord. When he looked down on them, he said, let not your heart be troubled. He's seeing that they were troubled. They were saying, you're going to leave us? They were depending on the earthly presence. They don't understand the spiritual realm. Are your heart troubled for many things? The Lord look at them and see the worry in them. They see Judas betrayed. Jesus said, somebody in this room is going to betray me. Peter is going to deny me. And they were looking upon Peter as the leader. And all of these things, they are like, we are done. This prayer team is done now. You know, we don't have no hope, man. We're going home. <laughs> I'm telling you, they are like, we can't believe. And the Lord sees it. And out of his love, he's going to instruct them. He's seeing us that this is the last days. And people are worried about different religion. People are worried about where they're going to live. People are worried about moving out of the city. All these things are going on. And they were missing the boat. They were worried about, they had no relationship. They were worried about Jesus being with them. Position. I want to be on the right side. I want to be the one laying hands and healing. I want to do this. We get caught up in position. Position going to destroy a lot of God's people in the last days. He's calling people for relationship. Listen, it's some little people in the church who you don't expect that the power is going to fall on. I'm telling you, it's some little people, uneducated little people going to lay hands with power because they were ready. The Lord says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. What he started to do was point them to the heavenly father. He said, take your eyes off me, even though I'm God and I'm down here. I'm looking to God, the maker. Look at verse 2, what it says now. In verse 2 it says, in my father's house, are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go, listen, I, I broke this up. As a matter of fact, I underline in my father's house. That's a relationship. The Lord is saying, I love you. I want to take you home with me. Remember Psalms 91, one of my favorite. He that dwelleth. In the secret place of the Most High. Shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He's my refuge. He's my fortress. God wants us to move in, in His pavilion. God wants to move us in. He said, listen, I have space home. He said, don't worry about the condition that you're in down here. Hello? He said, I have a bigger home. I have, you know what a mansion is? If you think it's a one bedroom, it's a big one bedroom. <laughs> Listen, it, it, you know, you could say it's a bachelor then. It's a 4,000 square feet bachelor. Hello. <laughs> God is, he's saying, Listen, in my father's house are many mansions. And he said, You know me, you've seen all the miracles. If it were not so, I would have told you, I got to go. I have to go. I go to prepare a place for you. What is he going to do? He's going to prepare. Have you ever had the guests coming over 
and you start to shine up everything. You start to get the bed ready. You start to get the food ready. Come on, what about our Heavenly Father? What about the streets of gold that we're going to walk on? What about going down, hallelujah, boulevard? What about taking a stroll, flying? Because now we are immortal. Hello. Could you imagine? He said, I go to prepare a place for you. It meant that he has to go. Go to verse 3 here. Lord have mercy. It's powerful. And he says, if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. Is he coming again? Come on. Is he gone to prepare a place? So why don't you book your room? Why don't you book your mansion? Hello, somebody. Come on, come on, man. Come on. <laughs> come on. God, God is so powerful. I want to show you a scripture here. <laughs> you see, God, God is, so, is so good. You know, I want to show you a scripture. Revelation. I have a scripture I want to show you in Revelation. Let me just point to it here. Because I even made a flow chart here to show you. I wish. Okay, Revelation 22, 12 to 13. Just divert a little bit there for me, Sean. Revelation 12, sorry, 22, verse 12 to 13. And you can find this right through the, the book of Revelation. And behold, I come quickly. And my reward is with me to give every man according to his work shall be. Lord of mercy. Go to the next verse. Let's see. And then he remind us, I am the Alpha. That's the beginning. And I'm the Omega. That's the end. The beginning and the end. The first and the last. The Lord is saying, trust me. I'm going to come again. If I'm gone to prepare a place, why are we acting like he's not coming back? Why we try to get everything down here earthly? And we're so rooted in what we believe and what we have till we can't even share. We don't even want to share because that's mine. You want to go and live in the middle of the woods alone in a mansion. And your brother is saying, can I come and stay with you? And you're like, you got to get your own. Come on. Do you know that if we are attached to things, when Christ comes, we're not going to want to go with him, you know. I'm telling you, because we are earthly hooked. And if we are earthly hooked, God is trying to tell us, you need to release what your desire is holding on to. I don't know what is holding you, but God is saying, you need to, come on. God is such a powerful God. The God we serve is not ordinary. Brethren, go back to the main scripture here because I have some things before we, we close that I'm going to show you about this scripture. God is so, so powerful. Go back to the main scripture here because there's something in John 14. And hear what the Lord tell them. And whether I go, you know. And the way he know. So the Lord surprised them and says, Where I go, you know. You have been reading the scriptures. You know that judgment is coming. And there's a heavenly place prepared. So why don't you get ready? Why don't you book your room? A lot of people don't believe that we're going to go home. It shows in our action. We love earth. We love it down here. Some of us praying and said, Lord, could I get married first and have some children before you come? <laughs> Hello? I'm telling you, we love it. Go to verse 5 because, uh, you know, God is going to unravel something. And then Thomas came up to him. Praise God for Thomas. And Thomas says unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest. And how can we know the way then? He's saying, 
So he's taken with shock. His heart was troubled. That's why he said they were troubled. And this is the last days, and a lot of God's people are troubled. They get confused with different doctrine. A lot of doctrine creeping in the churches. And we believe. And we're moving away from the Sabbath doctrine. We forgot when we first met Christ. And that's where I tell you, when you come to Button to Christ, we know a lot of people in Toronto watching, hundreds. Listen, Button to Christ is Seventh-day Adventist. Everything we do is according to the word. There's no strange doctrine will come here. All the people who are demon-possessed that come for help, only the olive oil, nothing else. I want to let you know that, that this is undiluted word. Here, Thomas came and says, it must have shocked the Lord to say, where you go, we don't know, and we don't know the way then. If you're in the church for so many years and don't know the way, you know, you have a problem. <laughs> You got to know the way. You got to stay in the word. The Lord says only the remnant of the remnant going to be saved. A lot of people are church goers. They just go to church to, for the hospitality and good lunch and fellowship. They're not prayer warriors. They're not coming to prayer meeting. They're not coming to the feet of the Lord to meet them. Go to the next verse. And hear what the Lord is going to say to Thomas. Jesus said unto him, I am the way. Hello? <laughs> like, that's deep. That shifts the whole dynamics here. You see, it took it over their head right now. A lot of times people preach and it gone over your head. Jesus was telling them that they have to know the way. And they're asking him, where's the way? They've seen all the miracles. They've seen everything that happened in life. They've seen, they read about the Red Sea. They've seen everything. And now they are like, where is the way? And the Lord shocked them. I am the way and the truth of life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. That shocked them. What it says, it cancel every other religion. It canceled the Buddhist. It canceled the Muslim. It canceled everything. Why? He is the way. You got to go back, brethren. Come on. You got to know the word. You got to go on the plan of redemption. You got to go back. When sin entered the earth, the only thing for the remission of sin is the shedding of blood. And the Lord was tired to see Abraham and his people carrying lamb to the slaughter. For the remission of sin. That's why he sent Jesus Christ. And he couldn't send Jesus Christ to just come down from heaven like this. Everybody would run away. So what he did, he impregnated the miracle of the Virgin Mary. The mother of Christ. And he came through the lineage. And he died for all humanity. So how can you get to heaven then without Jesus? How can you get to heaven without Jesus Christ? You cannot. And that's why the great controversy is to say that Jesus is not God. That's the greatest battle going on all over the world. Jesus is a good man. And we have this experience praying for people. And when we command the demon and say, in the name of Jesus Christ, the demon will say, don't say that name. We're going to leave now. Don't say that name. And I will go and say, we're going to say it again. You better leave right now. I'm going to leave. I'm going to leave. Who are you in Jesus' name according to Mark chapter 5? My name is such and such. Such and such sent me. Listen, when we're praying for people and there's witchcraft on them, the demon exposes everything. You see, when you're working for him and you're going to obey a man to affect other people, when God's people praying, everything is revealed. The devil is not going to say, that's my agent, I won't expose him. The devil is a liar, he's a thief, he wants all of us dead. Come on, the Lord is saying, nobody can enter but through Jesus Christ. There's no other way. Go to the next verse. And hear what verse 7 says. If you had known me, you should have known my father also. In other words, there's no other doctrine. He said him and his father is one. 
is the Trinity, is the Godhead. God the Father, the, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. A lot of people around the world are saying the Holy Spirit is not a person. He is not God. Tell them to go pray. They have no idea. A lot of strange doctrine is coming and say the Holy Spirit is this. Confusion in the churches around the world. We got to stick to the word of God. Thus said the Lord. And when we stick with the word, a lot of people are not going to like us. Come on. The true Adventist church preach the real gospel message all over the world. All over. So here it is. The Lord is saying, listen. If you see me, then you see the Father. And for henceforth, you know him. And you have seen him. You have been a Christian a long time. I am the representative. I am Jesus Christ. Go to the next verse. Philip now come up with something. Philip is there also. And Philip said unto him, Lord, show us the Father. And it sufficeth this. Suffeth us. Yes. Jesus said unto him, Have I been so long with you? And you has not known me, Philip? Come on. <laughs> Let's personalize it. <laughs> Have you come into this Adventist church so long and you don't know God? And you don't believe the Holy Spirit is God? Like, what have you been doing when you come into church? You don't believe in the three angels' message? You don't believe in the sanctuary message? You don't believe in all these things and you say you come into church and you're an Adventist? Adventist is supposed to be people of the word. You don't know the word all this time? Come on. You got to digest that. The Lord was asking his own disciples, you come in all this time and you don't know the way? And he says, he that has seen me has seen the Father. And how say thou then show me, show us the Father? He's saying, you don't understand that we work together is the three in one, one Godhead. You don't understand? A lot of people get confused. You see, you have God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit with different purpose. But they are one God. And a lot of people said, oh, but the, the, the Catholic believe in the Trinity, so the Trinity is not right. They are the one that brought it up. Listen, I don't even want to hear about Catholic. When I'm in the Word. It's not about that. It's about God the Father and the Son the Holy Spirit. You know what I mean? Everybody start to use, get ways to break things down. But the power of God is with us. You got to get it, brethren, that God is such a powerful God. So hear, hear what verse 10 says. And it says, Believe it thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, the word that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself. How could Jesus teach in them on a Thursday when he's going to be crucified? And they were walking with him all this time. What that says to you and me, a lot of people are going to be in the church for 40 years and still don't get it. Hello? A lot of people, and they are like, I've done that. I leave it to the young people now. I don't have to witness anymore. You ever heard a good Christian retire? Hello? <laughs> Not until Christ comes. The devil is going to fight all of us until Christ return. There's war all the time. He's never slept. He never slumbered neither. He's on our keel every single day he wants us dead. Some of us are retiring and look, leaning back and watching television instead of staying in the Word. So where are we going to get the power then? The Lord embarrassed them. The Lord is saying, the word that I speak, you don't understand it? You don't understand it? Come on. You don't believe that the Father is in me? And that the works that I do is my Father? He destroyed them. And they were following Jesus so long. So don't be disappointed. If somebody in the church for many years and don't know God, go to the next verse. I'm going to show you something. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me. Or else believe me for the very work's sake. 
In other words, even though you can't fully comprehend it, you're being with me, trust me. You don't get it. The half is not being told yet. Certain things you can't explain fully yet, but it's going to come clear later. The Lord is saying, trust me. And, and, and you know, this, this is so powerful. Go to the next verse. And hear what? Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. In other words, we can't heal if we don't have a full conversion of who Christ really is. So, in other words, a lot of people are not experiencing the power because they don't know Jesus. You don't get it. We're not talking about church goers because all the sermon that the Lord has given me are for us Adventists. We're in the church and we're sleeping. He's saying, come on, I got to read it again. You got to take your time with it and underline it. And that's how we do it at Button to Christ. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also. What's the work? You should list the work that Christ done. He heal, he restore, he cast out demon. All this work he did. So is this work being done today? Some people are doing some of it, but we're hardly seeing people casting out demons. <laughs> and, here, and here what it says. And greater works than these shall he do. Because it's the last days, the power is going to come with greater intensity and we're going to do greater work. Because I go unto my father. In other words, the Lord was encouraging them and said, listen, I'm going to go, but when I go, I got to encourage you and leave something to strengthen you. I got to help you out. I, I have a flow chart. That I, I, like a flow chart I made, and the first box was, don't worry, don't be troubled. I am God is the next box. I have a place to take you where there's no pain. That's the next box. And then the next flow chart box is, trust me, you can only enter through me. And then the next box is, if you know my name and you ask anything in my name, I will do it. And then he says, if I go then, I'm going to leave you some support to help you out. In other words, the Lord looked at his disciples and he said, man, you walk with me and you still don't get it. That's why the Lord winked at some of us. Eh? Because we weren't there in person. We're just reading the testimonies and the struggle that we are having. God sympathized with some of us. He winked at our ignorance. Some of us are deep in sin. We can't even escape it. The disciples were with him especially Peter. And we see that conversion will come later. You know, it, it really struck me. So, so hear what the next verse says. And it says, And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Are you asking things in the name of the Lord? Are you not seeing it happen? So what is wrong then? If you are asking and you're not seeing things happen, come on. What is wrong then? How many people praying and not getting answers to prayer? Is there something wrong? It's clear in the scripture. But you got to understand that the Lord is saying, if you are intertwined with me and believe that me and my father is one, if you believe that I'm God, and you ask anything in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hello. Hold on. We got to get this. We got to work this out here. Look, look. In other words, God is the one who is going to give the things. But you got to go through Jesus to get to heaven. And if you need anything, you got to use the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. If you're not using the name, you can't get anything. Hello. Come on. You, you got to get it, virgin. I know we're going to wrap up soon, but you got to get it. Again, if you trust in God and believe in him and know Jesus 
and you come with a sincere heart and say, Lord, I'm asking you to help me today. I'm going to lay hands on this brethren and I want this brethren to be healed. If you all, with all your heart and your mind believe and trust in, in the name of Jesus Christ, it's going to be done. When you're aware of this, it's going to tell you that you're going to structure your prayers in a special way. You can't be praying and say, oh God, I'm asking you for help, oh God of glory. Help me, oh God, and I thank you, oh God, for helping. Amen. That's a different prayer. No. <laughs> a lot of people come and say, why does Button to Christ have so much answers to prayer? This week, from last week to now, I could name at least four or five people delivered over the phone by just praying with them and all the pain is gone. All the headache is gone. All the sickness is gone. Up to four or five people just since last week. Why? Because when you pray, you have to end in the name of Jesus Christ. No, I want everybody listening. If you just pray anyhow, you're not going to get the answers. You got to pray to Jesus because his blood is the one that shed. He is the intercessor. His atoning blood gave us access to heaven. When we pray, if we don't come in the name of Jesus Christ, the devil already blocked the prayers. It can't enter into that realm. It cannot. I'm telling you, it cannot enter into that realm unless we go through the name. When the devil hears the name, he clears all the blockages when he hears that name. That name that is above powers. That name that is above principalities. That name is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I'm telling you. So if we are not specific in the way we approach the mercy seat, we cannot get good results. If you want to be specific, sometimes you got to write your prayers then. Pray and say, Lord, show me what to pray for. And you write your prayers and write it out. But you have to end through Jesus Christ. He said, you cannot enter. And then he said, ask anything in my name and I will do it. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. The Father give him access to open the door so the blessing can come down. But what happened? We are bypassing Jesus. And we're praying anyhow. We get in the spirit and say, Oh God of glory, could you help us right now? Oh God, you are the God of heaven. You are the Alpha and the Omega. The beginning and the end. You glorify God, yes. But you ask, but it's blocked because you don't go to Jesus Christ. And because the devil knows it, the devil always have people praying amiss. And we have a lot of people are praying and not getting answers to prayer. Because we don't understand the power of the name, Jesus Christ. If you want to understand this name, come out with us sometimes when we go to pray for people who are demon-possessed. Or come here and say, I want to stay in here when you're praying for somebody. I want to have the experience. We'll pray and ask the Lord to put the armor on you and you can experience what happened. That when the name of Jesus Christ, the devil trembled at that name. The whole controversy is that Jesus is not God. So we are trying to bypass him and we're not getting answers. So the Lord spoke to his disciples who walked with him for so many years and still did not fully know him. They were troubled in the heart. And he said, listen. Anything you ask in my name, I am going to do it. I am going to go, but my name, that is above all powers. Look at verse 14. Hear what it says. If you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Go to verse 15 now and hear what. If you love me, keep my commandments. It's taking a shift there. God is saying, the access to me, then, if you can't get it, is obedience. The word comes in. If you're not keeping the word, you can't know me, and you can't ask anything, and I give you. In other words, a lot of people come to ask and say, I'm an Adventist. I'm a Christian. 
I'm going to ask anyway. Because you said anything I ask in your name. And when you ask in your name, you have no idea that your closet needs to be cleaned out. Listen, you see because the Lord shows us the process. I know I share this testimony a lot, but the Lord impressed me again. Because a lot of people question and say, I don't understand that. They were struggling because I went to a church to pray for a young man who was an Adventist church, who was possessed. And when the young man walk, was coming, I told everybody there that he cannot come in because his father is not a Seventh-day Adventist. And they're like, I don't see anything wrong with it. But hear this. When the young man came in, we did one of the powerful prayers that we do. That we see God use many times. And that's the prayer where we pray your life through. So we're praying his life through. And the first thing he says is, is, is family. We wrote it down. Alcohol, drugs, abortion. All these things he wrote down. The thing is, the demon did not manifest still. Even though he's heavily possessed. He almost committed suicide just the night before. So now, I gave him the paper and says, confess. It's not confessing to us. But a lot of people are going to be seated and say, in James 5, it talks about confessing your faults. You see, when you verbalize confession, it's not to people. But what it does, it puts the devil to shame because it shows them that you're not afraid. You're not full of pride and say, I don't want nobody to know what I've done. You're saying, God, I'm vulnerable. I'm willing to let go. I'm not ashamed. And that's why I respect this young man here. Because when we pray, he wasn't ashamed to say, I have done this. I end up in jail. I, I, I had problem. So it meant that as soon as I started to pray with him, all the spirit that held him bondage started to leave his body immediately. Yes. Because it has nothing to hold. No shame, guilt. What what people going to say about me? We have people we're praying for, and sometimes when we pray for people, they will vomit. And some people don't want to vomit. The demon want to come out, and they're like, I'm going to be embarrassed. I, I, I don't. And they hold on and say, no, I don't want it. And they walk away not being free because they are like, if I do it, I'm going to be embarrassed. It's all about self. Don't we realize that devil want to kill us? He want us dead. We are to come in the name of the Lord and don't care. We want to go home. We want to book our room in heaven. Hello. The Lord says to them, if you love me, keep my commandments. If you love me, stop from playing church. If you love me when you church, come to church, stop the gossiping. If you love me, stop going to the Oberman. Stop burning the frankincense and more if you love me. Come on. Stop putting things in people's food if you love me. Come on. The Lord is playing. The Lord is saying, do the action. If you really love me, do something about it. Go to verse 16. And hear what it says then. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter. In other words, the Lord is saying, I'm going to go, but I realize that you're still weak and lack faith. I'm going to have to ask the, the, the other God, the Comforter, the Holy Spirit, to come and abide with you forever. He can't leave you because he wants to teach you so you can move in your mansion. Hello? Come on. <laughs> he he wants to guide you to the mansion. But what happened? A lot of people don't believe the Holy Spirit. And you don't even address the Holy Spirit of God, as God. You're like, something told me that. Something said to me. <laughs> you can't even address him. How you expect? He said, if you deny me, I will deny you. Come on. If we open up to the word of God, we will experience the power. If we recognize the Holy Spirit that he is God. And say, Holy Spirit, come quickly. Help me. I need you. Help me. Show me. Teach me. Lead me. I'm willing. Amen. Amen. That's the only way we can do it.
Because our righteousness is like filthy rags. We can't make it on our own. We will say we're not going to do this, and we end up just going like a slaughter. We'll be just going in and say, man, I know it's sin, but I'm going. I know it's sin. I can't stop. We can't stop. It's only God can stop us. Listen, anytime we understand the plan of salvation and understand how we need to depend on his Holy Spirit, anytime we, we, we accept it, we're going to stop from judging people. Because you're going to realize that people are at different levels. And everybody has their struggles. There are some people who is up here, but they've been hit down every night. They've been hit down and slaughtered by the devil. They are holding on by the string. And then you come and say, I can't believe you do that. And you're a woman of God. But you don't know where they have been. You don't understand. God is using the scripture to open people's eyes. That is not about us. We need that comforter. We need the Holy Spirit to abide with us forever. Anyhow, he let us go one moment. We come crashing down. I'm telling you. One moment he let you go, you go back and start to watch pornography. I'm telling you. One moment he let you go, you're gone by the street side to look at a different woman from your wife. You don't understand. Lord have mercy. Go to the next verse. Because I'm going to, we're ending soon. Even the spirit of truth. So he said, I'm going to give you the Holy Spirit, the comforter, whom the world cannot receive. Come on, come on. You got to underline that. Come on, come on, Virgin. <laughs> underline that word. He said, whom the world cannot receive. They can't. They don't have discernment. When you say something and say, the Holy Spirit told me, they're going to say, it's foolishness. Listen, after this, I know Sister Tech here, we're going to bring her on after this, just for even five minutes. You know why? Because she went to court. And she told them, the Lord told me to tell you this. And even her lawyer is like, you can't say the Lord says. You see, when you're wrapped up in Jesus, listen what it says. Whom the world cannot receive. They will think you're talking foolishness. But you got to accept it and say, listen, they don't understand. It's gone over their head. When you're locked up in the spirit of the Lord, they don't understand you. The world can't comprehend you. When you tell them about the Sabbath, they will laugh after you. Come on. Because it sees him not. No discernment. No I solve. Therefore, if the Christian don't have I solve on their eyes, brethren, we cannot see, we can't perceive. We don't know where to turn. We have no connection with God. We need that connection. We need that I solve. We cannot see him not. Neither knoweth him. But he know him. For he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Whoever knows the spirit of the Lord is at peace. Your heart not going to be troubled anymore. You're going to be like, God will take care of it. God will bring you to the pit to save you. And you're going to be smiling in the pit. Remember Paul and Silas. They're writing letters to the different churches. They're probably using some little light. You know, they don't have telephones, so they're using some little light in the night. And all the, the, the jail guards is looking over what they're writing. And so these men are full of wisdom. These guys are in chain. And they're not saying, God, where are you? How come I'm in locked up? I haven't eaten for five days. Where are you, God? I'm not going to be a witness any longer. Instead, they're writing letters to the Corinthians church and different church to say, listen, the Lord sees your ways and knows you. You better repent. They're writing to the people who think that they are free. That's divine. That's the Holy Spirit working. That's who we need to let in. If we let the Spirit of God in, the way we move and see the answers to prayer, people are going to tremble. Because the church is not getting it. They're not reading the word in depth. They're not going line for line, verse for verse. They're not going into the word deep enough. The spirit of the Lord cannot unleash over God's people. We're not giving him an opportunity to work through us. 
We are locked up in all sight of schism and ism in the church. Offices and I should be the leader. And all these things. We're missing the main mark of the gospel. Come on. The Lord says he's going to leave the comforter to help them. To heal them. To help them out. Come on. Come on. Go to the next verse 18. And hear what is going. And hear what it says. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Come on. Come on. Listen. The Lord is saying, it's not only the Holy Spirit available. I'm available too. You hear the song that says, Lord, I'm available to you. Come on. He said, listen, I will not leave you comfortless. You have backup. Come on. He said, you have God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and you have two thirds of the angels. Come on. Did you know that? Did you know you can call for angels? Listen, I call for angels all the time. There was one case I called for Gabriel. We're praying, and we called for Gabriel, and we could hear Gabriel touch down. And when we looked, the demon-possessed boy started to look up and started to tremble. You can call for Gabriel. But how many of us call for him? Hello? How many of us call for more angels? Legions of righteous. 2,000, 10,000 times 10,000. We have two ter- three thirds. Two thirds of the angels. More power is on our side. Amen. Come on. Do you believe? Yes. So why we walk around like we are not royalty? That we have access to power. Come on. Do you have access to power? Yes. Do you really believe? Yes. Come on. You're watching online on Zoom right now. Do you have access to power? Do you use the power? Is your room booked in heaven? What do you need to book the room? All the Lord is asking for is a contrite heart. Just come to him and give him everything. He just wants you to let go everything. Go to the next verse. I think we are going to just probably around 22. Yet a little while and the world sees me no more. But you see me. Come on, you got to break that down. The Lord is saying, listen, the world is seeing me now because I'm physically here. But there's a time coming, they're not going to believe me. But you have special access. The Holy Ghost power gives you access to heaven. Hello. (laughs) When you are born again, you have special lens. says, come on, you can see spiritual things that other people can't see. Because you are connected. Come on. You, you, you got to get it. He says, but ye see me. Because I live, you shall live also. You are transformed. You are not the same. You got to ask the Lord to do this to you. Come on. You can't be the ordinary Christian. If you are the ordinary Christian, brethren, you're not going to experience the power. Listen, sometimes we take some chances asking the Lord to do something and see God work. I was telling my brother here yesterday that if you are sick, did you know you can ask the Lord if he don't want to heal you, he can give you the herbs to heal you. Ask him. But again, when you ask, you have to listen. So if you ask the Lord and say, Lord, I have this pain, Lord, and if it's not a demon in my side, what can I use, Holy Spirit? And you pray, and you get your pen, and you listen. If you listen and you're not hearing anything, you go back and say, Lord, is there any sin in my life? Is there anything I need to confess? And you confess, and you go back and say, Lord, what should I use? And you listen. I'm telling you, a lot of people, what they do, they say, Lord, I don't know what to do. We're more complaining prior. You know what I mean? Lord, look what I'm going through. Look what they do to me, Lord. Look how wicked my neighbor is. (laughs) You know what I mean? We, we, We don't give God time to work, brethren. If we give God time to work and humble ourselves, he's going to tell us. We've seen that. We are living examples of praying and God give us herbs of what to use. But the key, what I see is that a lot of God's people not listening. Every, most people, when they finish pray, they said amen and they get up. When you pray with button to Christ people, learn this. Nobody says amen. When the prayer is done, everybody remains silent. 
And when we heard from the Lord, we'll say, Amen. We know that the Lord has spoken to somebody. Because we come expecting. And if you and your husband praying, one can pray and one have a book and listen. So one person is writing, the other person is praying, and you break the prayer and you're listening, but you're prepared to write. If you have a paper and a pen, that's exercising faith that you expect God to speak. If you don't have no pen, like a lot of people come to war and they don't have their Bible. You don't, you don't have a sword. How do you expect to survive? If you come with a pen and a paper and your Bible, you expect the Lord to speak and you expect answers. That's a measure of faith. So here the Lord is saying to them, little ones, the world see me no more, but you see me because I live and you shall live also. What a hope, what an assurance. Go to verse 20. These are deep scriptures that we have to go over. At that day you shall know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. He said, if you don't get the full picture now, you're going to know. He was speaking about this on the threshold on Thursday when he was going to be crucified Friday. He recognized that they are weak and they need encouragement. They need support. He's giving them the support that physically I may not be here, but the Holy Spirit is going to be with you, the comforter. And I'm not going to leave you just like that. I will come if you call me. He said, before you call, I've already answered. And verse 21, it says now, we're winding down. He that has my commandments and keepeth them, he is, that, he is he that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved by my Father, and I will love him. And I will manifest myself to him. This verse is powerful. Underline it also. The Lord is saying, the, the, the fix to this is keep the commandments and I will keep your words. Be obedient to me and my father will love you and I will love you and you will manifest power in me. You will see the works in me if you keep my commandments. What is the commandments? You, you know, <laughs> listen, I know we're going to end soon, but it's teaching God's people how to study the word. That you got to underline this now and say commandments. You got to go back to the commandments. And then some people say, well, uh, the Sabbath, the fourth commandment, the Sabbath. You know, the Sabbath is Sunday. God will show you that it's not Sunday, that it's Saturday. The Jewish Sabbath, Sabbath for his people. I'm telling you, when you start to keep the commandments, you can go back and say, Lord, I've kept your commandments and I'm asking you to do something and you told me that if I keep your commandment, you are going to do this. You can go back to God in that. Go to the next verse and then I'm going to leave you alone. Judah said unto him, not in Iscariot, Lord, how is it that thou will manifest thyself unto us and not unto the world? You listen to the question that Judas is asking. How are you going to manifest? He could not manifest to Judas because Judas is a traitor. Judas don't understand the spiritual realm. God is saying there's going to be people amongst us who don't understand because they have open doors. Judas did not get it. Come on. God have a, a saying. Go to verse 23. He has something to say. Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words. And my father will love him. And we will come unto him, we, and make our abode with him. God is saying, if you willingly let me in and demonstrate the love by keeping the word of God, we are going to be there. He's blowing Judas out of the water. He's blowing the naysayers. The people who come to criticize. Judas was there. I did a sermon on Judas. That Judas is the only disciple who wasn't called. It's very deep. You got to search for it. Go to verse 24. We got to wrap up there then. He that loveth me not. 
keepeth not my saying. And the word which he hear is not mine. But the Father which sent me. L listen. The, in other words, the Lord is, is putting Judas and said, listen. He's hearing some different voices. He's hearing some different thought. Because if you love me, you're going to keep my saying. And when the words of, of Christ is in you, you can't lie. You're not going to do certain things that go against the grain of the Lord. You're not going to be antidote to the Lord. You're not going to go against him. We're talking about conversion here. We're talking about something deeper here. The Lord was setting them up not to fail. He was addressing everything to his own disciples. He's addressing it to all of us. That is high time and we need to book our, our, our room in heaven before it's too late. Brethren, you got to go back and read it. But I want to leave one point with you here. I want to leave a point here that I have, I have here. We were at verse 24. We want, I want to leave something with you here. And, and I want to tell you, God was showing me something here when I was wrapping up the session, when I was praying this morning. That his disciples felt a void that Jesus was leaving. And they were unhappy and was discouraged and their heart was troubled. And I was driving and the Lord just spoke to me when I'm two minutes away from here. And the Lord told me while I was driving, he said, use this point here and turn it around. To say if God's people are troubled because they want more of Jesus. They have a troubled heart when they look around the world and see that something is wrong. His coming is at the door and people don't know him. If we turn around and be troubled, the disciples were troubled because they thought Jesus was leaving them and they have nobody else. God is saying if we put that negative into positive and be troubled that the world don't know Jesus, and start to go with the gospel message. Many souls, if we go with that intensity and energy to reach soul for the Lord, many people will come to know Jesus. If we put everything in, everything, if we lock out this world and focus on Jesus, if we shut down everything and say, Lord, Look on the trouble that is going on in Russia, around the world, in China, in Canada. The economy is crashing in Jamaica, all over the world. People need the Lord. The Lord is saying, if you have that desire and trouble for souls, God can transform us. He was able to transform Peter. Peter who denied him turned his life around. He came to the mercy seat and repented. God is saying to his people today, if you repent of your sin, I'm able. He's saying my blood is sufficient. The love that I have for you is sufficient. If you only surrender, if you only get a glimpse of the spiritual realm, our thinking will be different. It's not going to be about the mansion down here. It's going to be about when we go home and how long it is. When are you going to come, Lord? We want to go home. The prayer is not going to be consumed of a better job, of getting married soon, getting a better car. Our prayers are consumed. We are praying amiss. We don't understand that it's high time. We are closer than when we first believe. Christ is about to come and the church is sleeping. 
Why don't you wake up? Why don't you? I'm asking the Lord, please, Lord, give me the desire. Wake me up, Lord. God is asking you. He's at the door. Many people are going to Christless grave. When he's coming soon, he placed everything in position for you and I. His Holy Spirit is here, his comforter, to guide us forever. We have what it takes to make it home. We got to make that booking. And that booking is by keeping the word. If we don't keep the word, everything will be canceled. Our name will be removed from the book of life. Today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. As you listen to the song, harden not your heart. The Lord is calling you, harden not your heart. Sing, sister. I've wandered far away from God. Now I'm coming home. The path of sin too long I've trod. Lord, come on, come on. Do you want to come home? Hallelujah. Come on. Coming home. Come on, coming home. Coming home. Never more to roam. It's just you and God right now. You're watching live, you're wrestling. You want to come higher. I know He's speaking to your heart right now. Lord, I'm coming. Are you tired? Oh, Do you want to come home? I've wasted me. These precious years. Now I'm coming. Oh, he's calling you. You're watching live. I've he's now to repent. He want to show you something. With bitter tears. He's appealing to you. Lord, Open your heart to him. Coming. It doesn't oh, matter how long you're in the church. Coming. He's calling you. He's appealing to you right now. Coming. Why don't you make the step today? Never He's calling you. You want to come to the altar? You want to send a message? Pray for me. He want you to stop from playing Open church. Open wide thine arms of love. Lord, I'm coming. Don't be afraid. He's calling you. He's going to do something for you powerful today. I'm tired Are you tired? of sin. And straying, Lord. Come on, he's appealing to you now. Now I'm He wants to use you. Oh, he wants to empower you for service. I trust He can take away that sickness today. Believe He can set you free today. Lord, How you hear I'm his voice? coming. Oh, I'm about to pray right now. One more minute. Anybody else? Oh, 
send a message coming home. He's appealing to you. Never more to coming home right now. He's calling you. Lord, I'm coming home. We're about to pray. It's you and the Lord. You're watching live. My only hope, my only Feel free to come, sister. Feel free. Just move over a little bit. Lord, come, sister. Come in Jesus' name. I'm coming. If we have somebody, bring a chair for her right here. Bring a chair to where she can sit down here. God is working. Jesus blood. He's about to do something powerful. He died for you. He's right here. Lord, I'm coming. Oh, He's about to do something. Healing is going to happen in this place right now. Oh, Hallelujah. Coming. He's appealing to you. No matter your maladies. Spirit to fall in this place. Oh, fall upon every soul that is watching on Zoom and YouTube. Miracle is going to happen in the house of the Lord. Lord Miracle I'm in the homes that is watching. Oh. Mighty God. We welcome you in this place. Mighty God, we welcome your presence, Holy Spirit, in this place. God, come and be with us, God. Be with each and every one, Holy Spirit, in this place. Let us open our hearts and mind and give it all to Jesus. Hey, Jesus, give it all to him. All the pains and all the burdens, my veteran. Give it all to Jesus. Jesus, come in. Please, oh God, come in, mighty God. Come in the hearts of everyone in this sanctuary. In the YouTube line the zoom line and holy spirit come in oh god you are always there with us jesus you are always representing yourself in our lives no matter the struggles no matter the aches and pains that you are going through the lord jesus can do it for you because he has already carried that burden He's still saying, bring it more to me. I will lift it up for you. I will cover you. Do not be shaken for the evil days are ahead. But when you hold upon the promises of Jesus, the promises that he said, I will be back for you. If you are willing to go to his commandments, follow his footstep remember the burdens remember the cross that he carried remember all the struggles that he went through he is their bedroom the song man says i'm no longer a slave to fear because we are a child of God. We no longer a slave to fear. Bedrin, because we are a child of God. 
I feel different because I know that the Lord will do something in your lives. Whatever that you are going through, bedroom, you put it aside and you claim to that problem. I am no longer a slave to, to a slave of sin, a slave of fear, because God Almighty is my rock. He is our refuge, and He gave me ex Exodus 20 this morning, like Brother P just bring confirmation. Go back to the commandments. Go back because we have to reverence the Lord. Go back, Bedrin. The Lord is calling us and we have a blessing knowing that Peter know that he was going to go against God. God can even warn us before and we can repent. So whatever the burdens, whatever that you have in that secret closet, brethren, clean it out. Clean it out and let the Lord come in and fill you. Fill you with his Holy Spirit and all the reverence and all the promises and all that he wants to give to you because this earth is not our home. I know it's not my home. I want to go in the bosom feet of my father. Don't you want to be there? Yeah, Bedrin, no more. There is no more pain. There is no more suffering. Hold on to his promise and claim it. Claim it. Claim it, Bedrin. Go down on your knees. Finish your knees for the Lord. And no matter the, the naysayers, no matter what is going on in your life, you stand up for Jesus and you hold him and present him in everywhere that you go, in your homes, in your workplace, on the bus, anything that you do, you hold on to Jesus. So mighty God, cover us all. Heal us, strengthen us, and let us not forget our first love. Our first love. No other name but Jesus Christ of Nazareth, where only we we know is because of that blood we are made whole. So today, Bedrin, say with me, say with me, Lord, I am no longer a slave to sin because I am a child of the King. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Jesus, oh God. We reverence you. We thank you for the blood. Bless all hearts, oh God, on YouTube and on, in the sanctuary, oh God, on Zoom link. Oh God, touch them. Touch them, oh Heavenly Father. If you, if you feel weak and you feel feeble, it doesn't matter. You say it in your mind because the Lord knows every thought that you think of. If you cannot Jesus. say it verbally, you move something, you shake something, you throw something down and you say, God, have your way with me. Jesus. Do whatever that you want to do with me because I am no longer a slave no more. I am tired. Jesus. I'm giving it all to you, Jesus. So I Thank you, Lord, for the love. I thank you for Brother P for sharing that powerful message, oh God, because lives has been uplifted. Life has been changed. We are no longer a slave to fear and sin, oh God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I bless your name. I praise you, Heavenly Father, for your mercy. In Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen. Amen. And Father, I'm in full agreement with your daughter. And we exalt you as your people. Receive it, Lord. And Father, as I'm about to just anoint those for the altar, I pray in Jesus' name that you will reconsecrate the olive oil. And Father, I will be only anointing those who are at the altar in the name of Jesus Christ. And we thank you. We praise you. We worship you. In Jesus' name, right now. Gentle Savior, hear my humble cry. While on others outward calling, do not pass me by. I'm crying, Savior, Savior, my Lord, hear my humble, hear my humble cry, while on others thou art calling. 
do not pass me by. Let me at thy throne of mercy find a sweet relief. Kneeling there in deep contrition, help me by thy grace. I'm crying, Savior, Savior, my Lord, hear my humble, hear my humble cry, while on others thou art calling. Do not pass me by. Trusting only in thy merit. Would I seek thy faith? Heal my wounded, broken spirit. Save me by thy grace. I'm crying, Savior, Savior, my Lord. Hear my humble, hear my humble cry. While on others thou art calling. Do not pass me by, though the spring of all my comfort, more than life to me. Whom I have on earth beside thee, whom in heaven but thee, I'm crying, Savior, Savior, my Lord, my humble, hear my humble cry, while on others thou art calling, do not pass me, do not pass me by, Savior, Savior, my Lord. Hear my humble, hear my humble cry, while on others thou art calling. Do not pass me by, I'm crying, Savior, Savior, my Lord, hear my humble, hear my humble cry, while on others thou art calling, do not pass me by, we're crying, Savior, Savior, my Lord, hear our humble, hear our humble cry, while on others thou art calling, do not pass me by. Father, may you bless all those who are watching.
and may the full anointing go right through the Zoom line to the YouTube line and bless your people. And we thank you, O oh God, for blessing your people in Jesus' name. And before we close off, we're going to ask the question, anybody receive anything while I was anointing them? You felt the healing power of the Lord touch you. You felt the healing power. Anybody? Anybody? We want somebody just to testify. Anybody on Zoom? Anybody? Feel free to testify if the Lord has done something for you while we anoint you. Anybody? Anybody? Don't be afraid. They won't put the camera on you if you're afraid. <laughs> I, I felt the, the pain lifted. Yes. Because I, I, I couldn't do that without feeling the pain. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. She felt the pain lifted Amen. because she could not move her legs. Amen. And we're going to pray for her even more after because that's how it is. We will talk to you and we may have to even see how we can connect with you. We expect the Lord's moving. When we come into the house of the Lord, we expect God to move. We are people that keep the Sabbath. We are God's people. We expect the moving power of the Lord. So, you know, so God bless you then. And you may go back to your seat. And we're going to have a testimony that is coming up soon. But I think, Sister Michelle, we're going to move. While you're doing that and while you're preparing, I, I wanted to... To see if Sister Tekia is on while you, you, you're setting up. I just want to stay to the side here. Huh? Donation. Okay, you want to come up, sis, and come and do the donation. And then I will be talking to Sister Tekia. Is she on? Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll talk to you soon, Sister Tekia. And then you, you got to stay back for this testimony, okay? And you know that, you know, we're not going to be that long today. We're going to go to the testimony after. Okay, Sister Michelle is coming, and we know the Lord is with us, and he's going to carry us. What a God we serve. What a mighty rock, rock of ages, cleft for me. The God we serve is powerful God. Yes, the mics are over here as Sister Michelle comes. <laughs> amen, amen. You can bring them back over there, Sister Michelle. Go ahead, Sister Michelle. And praise the Lord. So, brethren, have you been blessed today? It has been a blessing from the beginning till now. And we want to just praise God always for just blessing us with the Sabbath, the day that we can reflect on what he has done for us through the week and what he is about to do, because a lot of us have had the Lord speak to us and say, listen, this is what your upcoming week is going to be like. This is what I'm going to need you to do. And we're going to ask the Lord to give us some strength in regards to that. And brethren, Button to Christ Ministries, you just said that you've been blessed. Amen. You've said you've been blessed. And those on YouTube and Zoom, you have been blessed. Amen. I know I, I'm hearing you. I'm hearing you. <laughs> So if you have been blessed and this ministry has been a blessing to you and you've sent it to your family and friends, we are really asking first and foremost for your prayers for the ministry to continue to lift up Brother Patrick and all those who support the ministry who are behind the scenes. We need your prayers. And secondly, we also need your financial help, your donations to help carry the gospel message. Brethren, the kitty is running very, very low, and we need the help of those around the world to donate. And to donate, all you have to do is go to www.buttontochrist.com. We have a young man that is in need of some funds, Romario, which is Lilith's son, who's going into his second semester now of school. And brethren, we have to find the funds to gather together to send and to help to make up to send him to university. He started and he needs the rest of the funds. So we're asking brethren to please help and donate. We have Sister Brown's house that has burnt down that we're trying to find the funds as well to support her to help build another house. And 
We just have various expenses here within the ministry as well that is needed. So please go to www.buttontochrist.com. There you'll find interactive transfer. You can do credit and debit card, and you can even come in person. If you have another method, whether it be Western Union or MoneyGram, please send us an email and we will contact you. There's many ways to send a blessing to this ministry. And I know we're going to have somebody collect here in the sanctuary as well. One of the young people, if you can get the bin, please, to get the offering, that would be lovely. And as you can see, as we collect the offering here in the sanctuary, we need a hundred people to pray for Linston. Okay, who can guess how many we have? Okay, we hear 60. Pardon me? A hundred? A hundred? Okay, so I'll tell you how much we have, brethren. So far we have 46. We have 46 people, brethren, that we are, that we have had so far. 46. So can you believe that? Brother Patrick has only gone up by one since last week. What, what do you think is happening? <laughs> well, we'll let him ponder on that. I know he's going to come and say something. Brethren, we have 46 people. And for those who are new, we are praying. We're the Lord has directed that we get 100 people to pray for this young man in Jamaica who's been going through a lot, demon possession, and we need 100 people to be able to gather together all over the world to be able to pray for him, for his deliverance. We don't want you to think about, I am not worthy. The Lord is looking at your heart. He knows your willingness and he knows that you want to serve him. So please, Go to the Lord in prayer and send us an email and say, I am willing, I am willing to pray for Linston. Praise the Lord. And before we go into the rest of our announcements, I'm going to have the young ladies to come up and to just bless the offering. Well, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> oh, I'm going to keep going with the announcements. Okay, Sister Cummins is coming. All right, praise the Lord. Come on up, Sister Cummins. We're going to do fill our cup. Praise, praise the Lord. <laughs> Go ahead, sis. Fill my cup and let it overflow. Fill it up. Fill my cup and let it overflow. Fill it up. Fill my cup and let it overflow. Let it overflow with love. Fill my barrel, fill my barrel, let it overflow, fill it up. Fill my barrel, let it overflow, fill it up. Fill my barrel, let it overflow, let it overflow with love. My tank, fill my tank, fill my tank and let it overflow, fill it up. Fill my tank and let it overflow, fill it up. Let it overflow with love and let it overflow with love and let it and let it overflow with love. Amen. Come young ladies, bless the offering. Come on up, come on up. I know you are not shy. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for letting us have another day of life. Please help this to be enough offerings to help to pay with college funds. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Dear Heavenly Father, as I come in agreement with Gabrielle's prayer, please help us to be safe today, and please help us, please help us to have a good Sabbath. Please help the money to multiply to be able to build back Sister Brown's house and for everybody who needs the money for different things, in Jesus' name I pray, amen. 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 Thank you, young ladies, for the Lord. We praise God. And, and brethren, um, on Thursday, we had a young person do the Bible study. It was such a blessing. Go back and watch last week's 
um, Bible study. It was done by Ellie Zan, and it was such a, such a blessing. So please do go back and support the young people because they're all in need of our prayers because a lot of them are going through a lot of things. And we never know what's going through the young person's mind, but only God sees and knows, and we need to always keep them in prayer. Praise the Lord. So, Brother Patrick, amen. amen. Yeah, we want to invite Tekia on. We just want to talk to her a little bit. Praise the Lord. And by God's Take grace, she'll be able to turn her camera on. Yeah. Praise amen. The Lord. So, <laughs> tell us where you're beaming. Amen. Hmm? Tell, tell us where you're beaming in from. I'm beaming in from Barbados. <laughs> Barbados. Okay. Yes. And where in Barbados are you? That Lucy, so that's the top of the island in the north. So the top of the island. In the north. <laughs> in yeah. the north, in the north. Yes. Okay, um, uh, just Sister Michelle, she has been going through a court battle. Mm -hmm. And um, we have been praying for her to get her child. Mm -hmm. She's in a separation, and her husband, let's say ex, but her husband took her daughter and they are in court. Mm -hmm. And the court date, a lot of people are praying around the globe and saying, you know what I mean? We're praying for tech here. And then me and Sister Michelle prayed, and it's like the Lord is showing us that the result is not going to be good. Mm -hmm. You know? And I'm saying, okay, I'm going to encourage her in a way, you know, not to tell her, but just to <laughs> encourage her. <laughs> so I called her up, and I prayed with her and I said, Sister Tekia, if it don't work in your favor, you know, you know that God is still working. And, and God may have a different time. His timetable is different from our timetable. And sometimes God tests us. So I, I spoke to her and I felt, well, you know. So after the court now, Sister Michelle, I decided to give her a call. And could you tell us what happened now, sis? You went to court and you know, <laughs> tell yes. us what happened. <laughs> Yeah, so actually the night before the court, which would be the Tuesday night after Brother Patrick had called me, you know, I felt a bit crushed in a sense, but I told God, like, this is your battle, I just give everything to you. And when I woke up on Wednesday morning, I had the strangest peace ever. And God gave me two verses, Isaiah 54.10 and Isaiah 54.17. So I said, okay, Lord, no matter what happens today, I know that you're in control. Everything okay. is in hold your Hold on, Sister Teke. And we know you have yeah. your, your Bayesian accent. accent. Okay? <laughs> so we want to make sure everybody... <laughs> we want to make sure everybody get what you're saying. So I would tell my sister, I have one of my sister, blood sister, Vivica, she talks really fast, you know, and we, we have to time her and tell her, slow down a little bit. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so could you just slow down a little bit okay. so that, you know? Yes. All right. Okay. So on the morning of the court, I woke up in peace. Like, it was just such a strange peace. And God gave me Isaiah 54.10. 54, 10. 54 10. And Isaiah 54.17. So I said, okay, Lord, like, no matter what happens today, I know that you are in control. And actually, before I left, the Lord directed me back to read Exodus 14 and also the chapter in Patriots and Prophets about the Red Sea crossing. Because even before this whole court thing began, God kept telling me, remember Pharaoh, remember Pharaoh, remember Pharaoh. So... I know that what I'm dealing with is a Pharaoh situation and God is going to have to do something by, by force. So anyway, Switch. I have my oil here. I actually took my <laughs> anointing oil to, to the court to anoint myself and my mother because my mother so. went with me as well. And when we got into the, the courtroom, they were doing this whole. So, so hold, um, hold on one second, for sis. My daughter. One second, sis. So you said the okay. Lord, the Lord is Give saying to scriptures. you, remember Pharaoh, remember Pharaoh. And okay. so I want everybody to take a note on that. The Lord is saying to you, remember Pharaoh. 
So in other words, then you're praying and the Lord is speaking to you. Mm -hmm. So God, you have a communication link because a lot of people are praying for you around the world. And the Lord is saying to you, yeah. remember Pharaoh. So now you get to the court. And what happened now? Right. So I go into the court and there I actually went back a little bit. My lawyer wanted me to file this financial circumstances thing. And it had to be accompanied with an affidavit. But she didn't want to put in it about God providing for me. So I let her know I will not be signing anything <laughs> because I'm not taking. The okay, credit. okay. We got to walk through it. You know. yeah. Don't go too fast. So you say then, <laughs> on the affidavit, you, you want to put that God provide for you, and the lawyer is saying they can't mm -hmm. put anything about God. Yeah, she doesn't want to, to put that. And I told her, well, I will not be signing it because I'm not willing to lie. I told her the way that God takes care of me is supernatural. And you cannot put supernatural in black and white because the carnal Amen. mind. Amen. 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 Hold on. Hold on. Amen. <laughs> hey, you cannot hold on, put hold supernatural on. We can't in rush black it. and white. It's too far. <laughs> Powerful. Listen. So she's saying that she's telling her own lawyer that she had to put it on the affidavit that God provide for her. And she's saying it's a miracle and it's supernatural in where the Lord took care of her. And the lawyer is telling her, her own lawyer, you can't put that. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> I guess when you, when you talk about the Lord, some people will think you're crazy. The lawyer is going to be saying like, the court is going to be looking at you. You're going to say the Lord provide for you? <laughs> She's stepping out in faith, Brother Patrick. She's stepping yeah, out. The funny thing is this is an Adventist lawyer. Mercy, wow. mercy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Wow. So, when she wanted to come to my house earlier in the week, I heard the Lord say that, that won't be necessary. So I'm like, okay. She tried again. And the way that things happened on the day of court, I was not able to file anything and i remember the lord had told me it wouldn't be necessary so when i got into the court the other side's lawyer they were like okay they're not going to deal with the financial thing today they're going to leave that to an, a later date and i remember the lord told me me filing Amen. would not be necessary <laughs> Mercy. So, so, so the Lord God is your lawyer then. I think you're mixing up the lawyer. Hello. Yeah, he is. Yeah. No, he is. Like, I know naturally you say my lawyer, but I don't look at her as my lawyer. She's the lawyer, but Jesus Christ is my lawyer. Amen. Amen. So, <laughs> as they're going through about the whole school thing, the lawyer said to the judge, you know, she doesn't have instructions from me and that I would like to respond orally. So the judge was saying, oh, what, what, more, what more would I have to say? And as I'm sitting, the Lord told me, do not be afraid of their faces. Speak what I tell you, lest I dismay you before them. And I'm like, okay, Lord, nothing more and nothing less. So I had to be sworn in, but I decided, I told the legal clerk, I am not swearing on the Bible, I will affirm. And she goes back to her station and I'm standing and she's facing me, so we're facing each other. And this lady is a ball of nerves, like she is almost struggling to get the words out. And I'm in my mind like, what is wrong with her? Why does she seem so afraid? Yeah. <laughs> this is not normal. So after that affirmation and she sat down, the judge asked me to respond to their whole request for transfer. And I told the judge, as I told you since last year, the Lord has said, that the child is not to be in that school, to be in school at this time. She is to be homeschooled. 
that's all I said because that's what the Lord told me to say. And and your you your your lawyer you is your lawyer nod nudging <laughs> you in the side. You can't say that. What what your lawyer was saying? <laughs> no, I'll tell you about what she told me afterwards, right? <laughs> because the way that we were sitting, like she was to my left, I was to her right, but there was a little space in between us. And actually, before we went in, she asked me, um, what are you going to tell them when they question you? I said to her, I do not rehearse what I'm going to say. I pray and I give God control of my mind, my thoughts, and my mouth. Because if I respond, it's going to be me responding in my flesh, and that is not good. So I don't know what I'm going to say. God is going to tell me what to say Amen. at that time. Mercy. So, you know, she was not really having it because she was saying, you know, think about how that's going to make me look. And I told her straight, it's not about you and it's not about me. It's Amen. about God. So I Put really your foot hear. down, sister. You are the one that hired her. Put your foot down in Jesus' yeah. name. <laughs> <laughs> After that, the judge is going on about, um, she actually said, the truth came out of her mouth. Because last year, they lied and said that I consented to this child going to this particular school. But no, she changed her tune and said, I never consented. I was always standing on homeschooling. And funny enough, that homeschooling situation was such a miracle because God had been telling me to homeschool the child. I was begging God, can I put her in the Adventist school? And God... I kept saying no, and I kept asking why is the Adventist school, but God didn't tell me why until like a year afterwards. And I'm like, okay, Lord, I understand why no. And during the whole court process, I went back to God. I said, God, are you sure that you want me to be homeschooling this child with everything that they're doing? And I literally broke down and I told God, if that is your true desire, I'm giving you basically an ultimatum. You have to make it clear. And a month later, I received a package, a letter to my house, all the way from Virginia in the USA. I do not know where Virginia is. Mm. And when I opened up this package, this, this package is addressed to me. And it's a homeschool package. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. So no matter what anybody says, this Amen. is my final confirmation. Although, yes, the Lord would have been telling me this over and over and over. But because of what I was seeing, I was like, surely God probably changed his mind. He, he can't want me to do that. But he made it clear. This is what you are to do. Amen. Right? So, I, so coming back to the judge rejecting it again. I felt peace because I had delivered the message of the Lord. The last time I went to court, no, two times before when I went to court, it was a message to them of repentance. Amen. It was a message of repentance that God's hand is still stretched out in mercy. He's against them and what they're doing, but his hand is stretched out in mercy. They laugh at me. They mocked me, Mercy. but I didn't care. Amen. I am just, I see it as I am kind of on a divine assignment in Amen. a sense. I don't know why. I don't know any of it, but I just know that I have to obey God and what he wants me to do. Amen. So after the judge is going on, then again out of her mouth, the truth comes out about what they're trying to do, and that is alienate me from my own child. Mercy. Mercy. So they're saying, you know, she needs to go to a counseling psychologist to figure out the impact of her being alienated from her mother. And I'm like, but when I told you all what you all were doing was wrong, I was accused of telling lies. Yeah. I was accused of accusing, but look, the truth is coming out of your own mouth. 
You said that? You said that so, to the judge? No, I didn't say that to uh, the judge okay. this one. The last time I went to court, they were laying and I started to tell her all these things that she said, how she put herself above God and she went crazy. It was like demons were manifesting. And she's very angry because I'm accusing her of being oppressive and I can't tell her that she's lying. And I'm like, but you are lying. You are telling lies. <laughs> and if you say this and that, you are putting yourself above God. And God is going to deal with you. <laughs> <laughs> Mercy. You know, Mercy. They tried, to, they tried to lay hands on me. But before, but her court martial tried to lay hands on me. But before I had left home, I had told God, you know, if any of them try to touch me, let them fall immediately. So as he was trying to get out of his seat, he couldn't get out of his seat. And I'm like, he should be grateful to God because if he touches me, <laughs> it's not going to be good. Amen. It's not going to be good. And God in his mercy is holding them, but they can't see. Amen. So, we can continue on the proceedings. Like I said, they rejected it. My mother came in. My mother testified. I should be allowed to have my child for more than three hours. And I don't need to be supervised because I'm not a threat to her. I am not crazy in any way. The judge was not having it. The judge was like, she decided that I must be supervised. So I will be supervised. Like, okay. So... We left, and when we got outside of the room, the lawyer is like, oh, Takiya, you made me so nervous. And I'm looking at her. I'm like, why? Why are you nervous? I already told you I'm going to say what God tells me to say. I can't not say what God tells me to say. I'm not getting into trouble with God for you. No. Amen. So... He was going on, oh, I want you to have back your daughter. And I told you that if you said this, this is how it was going to go. I'm like, little do you know, God forewarned me before anyway. And I have a great peace because I know how this is going to end. And it's not going to end well for them because they're fighting against God. So she decides she's going to try to get my mother to understand her perspective and how it makes me look. I look crazy in the court and my mother said i am in full agreement with her because she needs to obey what god says <laughs> <laughs> so Amen. that didn't go <laughs> that Amen. didn't go and i was like mommy it makes no sense trying to explain to these people she doesn't know the miracles that god has worked all throughout this case she she really doesn't so it's like talking to a brick wall and like i said i'm just not willing to disobey god under yeah, the man. whole thing of i i want my daughter back yes i want my daughter back i love my daughter but there's a way that god is guiding me through this and i have to follow god's way i have to follow what god says and you know ultimately god is about saving souls the mere fact that he says to remember Pharaoh, that judge is a Pharaoh. My daughter's father is a Pharaoh. His lawyer is a Pharaoh. But there are other people that have come in and out of that case, right? I don't know where their hearts are at. I do not know if by my standing, by my testimony, I, I don't know what happens at night when these people you know, go into their private rooms or whatever, I don't know. And can I get in the way of somebody possibly coming to Jesus Christ because I want my daughter back so much that I'm willing to disobey God? Hey, you know, man. God oh, already said that she's coming back. So well, if God says that she is coming back, she is coming back. Amen. 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 No, but, but brethren, you got to look at her and see the confidence that she speak with, knowing that is a mother and her daughter was taken away, but she put in God first. I think we ought to learn something from this all over the world, those who are watching. This is powerful tech here. You could see the desire on you that I love the Lord and whatever the Lord says, I'm going to do it. 
<laughs> whatever, Amen. whatever he says. And also, for my daughter, I try to, well, I have tried to instill in her obedience to God. I always told her, you know, even if it's mommy telling you to do something that goes contrary to God, you have to obey God first and foremost. I may not be around all the time to, you know, guide you and direct you and everything like that. I may not be. I, I don't know how long this world has, you know, to last or what's not. But as young as you are, my daughter is five years old. You have to have your own experience wow. with God for yourself. Powerful, you know, powerful. yes, you are at the age of where I have to stand to give an account. So God is not going to hold her responsible for what is happening or the mere fact that she's been put into environments or situations where she's been encouraged to break the Sabbath, not read the word and stuff like that. I'm standing in the gap for her. And I know that God is hearing my prayers for her. So, you know, if life goes on much longer and she reaches that age of accountability, then I have done my part. Then she has to stand for herself, so to speak, you know? So Amen. with me choosing to obey God, despite everything, everyone against me, be being called crazy, me being laughed at, people turning against me. I mean, Adventist lawyers telling me I have to obey a judge. I mean, a judge that has literally said out of her mouth, that my divine intervention should tell me that she is the highest in the land and I must obey her. I'm sorry if Adventists are telling me that I, I have to do that because the Bible says we must obey authorities. Yes, the Bible says that we must submit to authority. But as long as authority does not contradict what God says to do. Amen. 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 I got to say, I got to give credit to your mother, man, because that's a home. That's the home. You know, I heard you speak, and I know you grew up in a good home where the Lord have instructed you, and you have committed and dedicated your life to the Lord. You know, it's such a blessing. I know we got to talk to you again. You know, we got to talk again because we have a testimony coming up, and we plan for it, but I had to bring you on because I know, you know, Everybody needs to hear because people are praying for you and we want to he hear what happened. So it didn't work out in your favor yet, but the yeah. saying is God is working in the meanwhile. So he's doing something and when it's finished, your daughter will be coming home. So hopefully, right. you know, very soon your daughter will be home and we're able to bring you on with your daughter. We know well, in Jesus' name. Yeah, permanently. permanently. No, 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 not temporal. No. Not temporarily, and I just want to give also two more prayers before us. I just want to praise the Lord for Sister Hannah and Sister Michelle Jack. Yeah. Because after everything settled down, you know, I'm still a human, I'm still a mother, I still have emotions, it still hurts. Yeah. You know, it was very tough the following day. I was very, 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 very crushed. And, you know, I didn't even feel like Pray. All I managed to say is like, Lord, hold my child, cover me in the blood of Jesus, put on the whole armor of God, cover me in the blood of Jesus, put on the whole armor of God. I give you this day, Lord, because I'm not able. And Sister Michelle and Sister Hannah, they called and it was such a, they don't even know. They don't even know how God used them to encourage me. Amen. And yesterday evening, I called my daughter. I didn't get through, but I said, uh-uh, this is the Sabbath, and this is Satan's pattern. Especially when it comes to the Sabbath, he would try to bring discouragement and, you know, oh, they're going to be doing this to her. She's going to be that, and all of these thoughts. And I said, no, Lord, this is in your hand. You will deal with this. Amen. And I didn't fret. And as I was sure right to prepare to welcome the Sabbath, my phone rang and I said, okay, that must be my daughter, but she has to wait because I need to prepare myself that when the Sabbath comes, I'm in the right frame of mind. She will just have to wait. Yeah, man. <laughs> so when wow. I got everything together, I called her back 
and the sun was about to set. And I said, you know, mommy's going to have to talk to you later because mommy's about to go do worship. And my daughter, I know that this is the Holy Spirit. She says to me, mommy, I want to do worship with you too. Amen. I said, okay. And from the time she said that, her father picked her up and carried her away from the phone. He's talking and distracting and all these different things. And, you know, the devil was like, put down the phone. Look at what they're doing. Put down the phone. I said, no, I'm going to sing. And I kept singing. I kept singing. I sang the uh, welcome in the Sabbath song and everything. I refused to give up. I refused to give up. I said a prayer. I refused to give up. And eventually, she came and she sat. She said, Mommy, I'm ready. I'm Amen. ready to hear the story now. Amen. <laughs> she wanted to hear the story of David and Goliath. And I read that through with her. And as I'm reading through, you know, they're trying with all these distractions, but I'm pushing through. I'm pushing through by God's grace. And when it got to the end, I reminded her about the armor. And she started telling me about the armor of God. And as she told me about the armor of God, I reminded her, yes, that's why you need to hide the word of God in your heart. And no matter what anybody says and what's not, God is going to fight for you no matter what. And just reminding her of these, these little truths. But it was such a beautiful way. Amen. And they told him, well, happy Sabbath. It was such a beautiful way to start the Sabbath because they have been doing whatever they can to erase God from her, to stop her from even wanting to talk to me to the point where she's like, I don't want to talk to you and all of these different things. And that was, that was definitely the Praise God. Holy Spirit. So I Amen. was really grateful to God for that. Amen. So God just made your day, sister. And yeah. allow the Sabbath, a, a, a powerful <laughs> approach to the Sabbath. May the love of yeah. God just be with you, sis. And we're praying for you. And I'm waiting for that day. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Take care. All yeah. the way from Barbados. Hallelujah. Praise God. God is awesome and powerful. <laughs> wow. Wow. So, um, we're going to introduce this family. Uh, Sister Michelle, you're going to play the intro. As we prepare, as we prepare, um, we just watch the intro for a bit. God, praise God. I just want to say welcome again to the divine rescue. And this is a powerful moment when we have the opportunity to get right into the family to talk about the power of God. So again, journey with me into this family's life where you're going to hear from this amazing family. Brethren, fasten your seatbelt because this is powerful. We just want to welcome this amazing family to the divine rescue. We're going to ask you to zoom in to come in with me because this is real. And we're going to ask you to just, we, we're going to be interviewing you, but we want you to just introduce your wife. We can see and tell us where you're coming from and, you know, how far, it, uh, how long did it take you to get to Button to Christ? Just okay. share a little bit. This is my lovely wife, Samantha. And we are coming from the U.S. in Tennessee. Yes, yeah, so how I come to know but to Christ, the Lord has been showing me in my dreams. See, I'm casting out demons. See, I'm praying for people with hunchback people's eyes, is affected people blind. And I'm laying my hands on them and saying the name of Jesus. And I'm wondering for years, I said, Lord, how are you, how are you giving me these dreams? What does the, what they mean? 
But when I look into the Adventist church, we don't believe in these things. But when I'm reading the word of God, the word of God, Jesus is saying that I gave you power over demon and, and over unclean spirits and over, and over all manner of sicknesses. So I'm, I see this in the church and I'm still searching, searching. So lo and behold, I so, know I... So just, I'm going <laughs> to cut in at times. So you were having this desire yes. that you're getting dreams that you're seeing yourself casting demon out. Mm -hmm. But when you go to the church, you can't get the support. So you're wondering if this is real. Yes. So um, tell us a little bit then about your background. Because how were you searching for God that you come to that point in your life? Well, I, was, I realized that when I was younger, I, I something special about me, but I couldn't get the answer, right? Okay. And growing up, I, I grew up in a rough neighborhood, rough. I yes. grew up with a lot of rejection, you know, and not having the support from family members, you know. I get in a lot of troubles that I can't understand. But one thing with me, I always pray and say, Lord, thank you for waking me up this morning. But I always pray and I look up in the sky. As a young boy, they yes. say there is a God. But I believe there is a God in the heaven. So I always want to know this God. But even though I pray and I believe this God, but I did want more, but I, not, I do not have the support. So, so family support then is very crucial. Yes. Because if you don't have the family support around you and you're living in a ghetto neighborhood, you're going to get influence from other friends and, and people. Mm -hmm. going to influence you and it's going to have a, a serious impact on your life. Yes. So you were seeing that then growing up in the ghetto. So you had the opportunity where you were calling on the Lord and mm -hmm. calling on the Lord. Yes. Wow. And you know, growing up in the home, you don't really receive, um, got that love from your family member. And as a young man, grew up in the ghetto, see crime and violence, you know. Um, because when you, you don't have the father figure, you don't have the father in the home. So you're looking for love in the streets. So an older guy will call you and yes. give you some love and put his hand around you and say, man, you are the greatest and give you uh, some money or something. Yeah, give, you, give me ganja to smoke, drinking liquor, going to party and all of these things, you know. So okay. I thought that that was life. Yeah. You know, because yeah. I was never getting it from family members. Uh, so in the street, growing up, I thought that that was really life. So do you think that, have you examined your father and your mother to see if it impacted them? They didn't have a mother and father? Well, my mom, she have her mom around. My mom lived with her mother. But and what my about father, her father? What about her father? Her father um, really never in her life. He was absent. Okay, so there was a lack then. Yes. You know, so there was a lack. Her father was in yes. her life, and now your father is not actively yes. there. So yes. it impacts you. He's there, but he's not present. Okay. You know, going, growing up and going to school, basic school, primary school, high school, my father is not present. Even though he's alive on birthdays, Go look for my dad and tell him my birthday. He said, oh, man, I forgot about my birthday. And it's tear me up. You know, they, when t peer, um, parent and teachers meet and you go to school and you're supposed to carry your parents, when you do good in school and whatever, my father never there. And I, I have my friends, their parents, their, their father there supporting them. And I'm the only one there, you know, with Mercy. my grandmother. So it, 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 it have a toll on me growing up. And I think that will impact our viewers to know that if you have your family, and your children, you need to go to that parent-teacher's meeting. It's mm -hmm. important. It's going to scar them. And I think that's what's lacking. So now you are in Jamaica. How did you migrate? You migrated to the U.S.? Yeah, my mom, my, my, my mom, father, ended up um, filed for her, and she ended up in the U.S. Okay. Around, she, she come to the U.S. in um, 2001. Yes. And something happened with my mom. She was supporting us, but something really happened. And about five to six years, we don't hear nothing more from our mother. So, you know, in the, in the ghetto, in the Jamaica, and they know that you're, you have people, or family member overseas. They say, oh, your mom in, in, in America, and she don't remember you guys and whatever, and it is really poor. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's mind rocking, you know, and you don't have the support. You don't have a mother figure, a father figure, and you just have to turn to the streets. So you just have to do things on your own. Yes. So how did you approach her when you migrated now? She finally filed for you, and you end up in the U.S. So how did you approach her? She's a stranger now. You don't even know her. Well, 
Coming to my mom, I thought that was um, that was life. Now she giving me, she said she giving me the opportunity to come to um, live a better life and whatever. So, but um, so true. I'm, I don't really used to my mom, so I used to stay in a lot. Yes. I used to just stay in the house and like my mother get frustrated. Man, you gotta go out. You gotta go meet people. Go out and go meet people. Go walk around. So I used to start walking around. So you were enjoying the time with her then? Yes. But, but she, she weren't having it. No, she don't want that, you know? So she said, I mean, the house too much. I would learn to um, cut the grass and all of these things. But my mom really said, you need to go out and find friends. But say, telling me that, I go find the wrong friends. Mercy. And, and I know this is going to impact a lot of people who are watching because this is crucial and so. So you went out and started to find friends now. Find friends, going, the friends that I found, I just end up stop smoke because coming to the US, I have to stop smoke because I have to do a lot of um, drug tests and all of these things so I can't smoke. So I leave that, the smoking and all of these things just to come to the US. So when I come to the US now, I, because my mom said go look for friends, I meet friends who are smoking um, doing scamming, going to club, partying, sleeping with different, different females. So I thought that, that was life. This is the American dream, yeah. you know, and not knowing that my life was going down the drain. So at the same time, the Lord was speaking to you, though. Yes. There's some connection with yes. God. Yes, and every time when I'm doing stuff, God will speak to me through dreams. If something going to happen five or six months, he show me. But I don't pay attention to it. He will show me, he will show me like I will look on this person I'm hanging out with. And all of a sudden I maybe see this person high glitch, like a demon. I said, and I look, but so naive, I said, okay, the person maybe do you giving me chaos here, you know, you try to yeah. give me <laughs> So I'm not paying that. attention to the red flags, you yeah, know? Yeah. Yeah. But Bless even though it. I end, before I even end up in my situation, God gave me dreams. Of dream upon dream upon dream, warning, but I ignore the warning. So, so what kind of God do we serve? that give you warnings and you still do it and he still rescue you. Can, can you understand that, God? He said, I, I, I have loved you with everlasting love mm -hmm. and with loving kindness I have drawn you. Mm -hmm. So that love... That sounds for that's so Isaiah 43. Uh, Isaiah. That's Jeremiah. That's, Isaiah. Je that's in Jeremiah 31. At 31? Okay. Yeah. He said with loving kindness. So, so that was Isaiah. foreign for me. Yeah. Love, you know, love, that's really foreign, you know. Yeah. So I always seek in it because I don't get it. Because I grew up with a family member, they don't hug. They but don't it hug. It seems like that's the norm for some Caribbean. Yes, they, where don't, they hug. don't hug. They don't hug. They don't put their hands around you. They don't, they don't support you. When you do wrong, they criticize you. Oh, you ain't good. You, you, you are like your poop, your, fa your yeah. father. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they say you are like your no good father. So these are the things that you grow up and you say, man, I'm nobody, you know, I'm nothing, you know. Yeah, like, you are like this scum. So your parents talk to you and the, your mother will say, oh, you are no good. And children, they grow up with these things and they say to us, in, internalize it. And especially a boy, for parents used to tell you this grandma, hand, cousin, they say, man, you ain't going to come up to no good. You're going to get killed in the street, just like your oh, friends. Okay, okay, all right, hold it right there. Just going to talk to Samantha. Yes. Samantha, mm -hmm. you grew up in a nice family, don't you? What was your relationship <laughs> in your family? Just share a little nutshell of it. Um, well, in my family, um, well, my mom, I'm really close with my mom, mm -hmm. right? And my mom went away um, abroad, and I was living with my aunt for some years, so, but we do have a close relationship, like close knit with my siblings and, you know, and some of my aunts and so on. So we do have a close relationship. So were your father figure in the home? My father was not in the home. But still, so the mom filled that void in. Yes. yes. So, so can yeah. we conclude then, then it's where you grew up then? Yes. And it's your genealogy because his parents may go through a lot of abuse. Mm -hmm. But your appearance was different because I noticed from speaking to you mm -hmm. even off camera mm -hmm. that you grew up from a really decent home where everybody's knit together. Mm -hmm. They look out for you. You communicate with your mom, everything. Yes, so that's the thing. And he's, he noticed that big difference as well where he's, you know, saying like he noticed it like, oh, your family is so close. You, you know, your, your mom, your sister, everybody calling you all the time. Nobody checks on me. So he, he, he does compare us. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Mercy. So, brethren, we see the dynamics then mm -hmm. that she grew up in a single home, but he grew up in a home where mother and father, he knows his father. 
but he actually wasn't there for him. So you can be in the home and still be absent. Mm -hmm. And it can impact you even greater. Yes. So now you're in the States now. You're going out, you're making friends now. Mm -hmm. And that's where trouble start to come. Yes. So, I, and so when I, I say, God, speak to me through dreams, right? This is yeah. really one of my gift. Um, he keeps speaking me through dreams, but I'm ignoring it, you know. Um, I don't want false light because I think in, um, in Jamaica, man, coming to America, man, you're going to get rich. So that's what my mind said, you know. Yeah. So I want money, money growing yeah, on trees. Yeah, money growing on trees, you know. <laughs> so, you know, I see my, it's people getting, sending barrel from America, and the clothes, they smell good, and a different style of shoes. Mercy. So I, I want that life, you know, because yeah. I never get it when I grow up. And also, one more thing, too, before I, I, I come back. I see a lot of fight in my family. My mom and my, my hand, they're fighting with their mother and a lot of argument, cursing and all of these things, you know? Yeah. Fight, big fight, people get caught, hurt. So this is who I grew our own. Yeah. Grow up in. So come to the U.S. now. I came, I came, to, the, I came to the U.S. 2011, March the 12th, mm -hmm. right? And an incident happened. I was hanging around some guys do scamming. Mm -hmm. taking people um, information and fraud in, right? Scamming yeah. and all these things. So I see that, and I see these guys making money. Yeah. So that I, they, they really bringing me into it because mm -hmm. they see that, man, you, 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 this is the life right here, you know? Because I'm not driving. They're driving the big car, nice car, mm -hmm. blinging all of the girls. I said, man, I got to come up too. Yeah. I try to compete, so it's competition. Yeah, so yeah. I, I start to go follow their lifestyle, I realized that I have a purpose, but Satan tried to take me out from day one. Okay. And all of them, they don't get in trouble, but I am the one who always get in trouble. So, because even when I spoke to you earlier on, back home, mm -hmm. you have a lot of near-death experience. Near-death experience, Where yeah. they point you out and accuse mm -hmm. you and yeah. come to kill you. Yes. Several times, men come to take your life. Yeah, because I remember one of my school friends, um, school, I go to school with him. He go rob in Jamaica. Yeah. And he tell lie on me because of jealousy. Because yeah. I'm a person, I love to work. I'm a hard working person. I'm let these hands work. Yeah. You know, and I'm a kind person too. So I, I don't know why they're jealous of me. Um so the guy end up steal some people, rabbit and whatever, and we end up past the same era, not knowing. And he tell the gunman them, the guys, the gangsters them in the community, and I was sleeping when they called me out of my yard. When I come out of my yard, out of the yard, yeah. about five or about 20 men with long gun, all kind of different guns with button ready for me. Gun on me. So I was wondering what's going on. I was shaking too. Mercy. Shaking, you know. Mercy. So, so what's Mercy. going on? They say, yeah. and, they, and they say, come here. So my, my, my sister didn't see that they, they're gone. They run gone. <laughs> <laughs> but you got to face it. So yeah. God, because if you stay in, they will come in to get yeah, you. Then but, it's going yeah, to be more. I don't know what happened, but. This fear did come over me, but I start get courage to speak. I said, no, I never steal no rabbit, even though my mom was knocking, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> knocking, you know, scared. <laughs> and all of a sudden, I, and the guy said, all right, calm down, calm down, talk to us. And I'm there, you know, trembling. I didn't think I kind of wet myself. <laughs> <laughs> Mercy. Yeah, because you see all of those guns and they're yeah. threatening you, and you see these guys with their serious face, you know, cursing at you, cursing bad words. And... I don't know what happened, but I said, listen, I'm working, and, I, 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 you know, and this is, uh, are you guys know that, and I used to dance too, so I was well known, so I was a good dancer, yeah. got dancer, you know, I used to do freestyle, I do American freestyle, you see they do, yeah. and, the, and Jamaican dance, so I used to go to a lot of parties, so they, I'm well known, so yeah. they come to me and question me, I tell them, so, listen, I never steal, but I don't know, but God deliver me from that, because I supposed to die that day, yes. and the guy them walk away, Man, I don't know what happened. And my parents, my family, they don't, they're not there for me. You see, you see, you are left on a bad company. Me tell us if you stop, follow them boy there. You yeah. see, you, you make the people them come out with yard and all of these things. Yeah. Right? They curse me out. They're not even said, okay, No like, encouragement. No encouragement. They're they giving it to you. How is it that them come here and you, you make the people them, they could have come kill us too. And I'm telling them I'm crying, my grandma cursing me out my auntie. so within your own mind you know that the lord have a purpose for you yeah, but because I, yeah. they accuse you and god release you and they walk away mm -hmm. and did not take your life yeah even even when i supposed to come because my, my sister get uh, my mom far from my sister she come to the united states um 2010 so i supposed to come 2011 so i come here march march february i get arrested 
another time again. I was dancing, whatever it was at a club. My sister come down from America, coming with you. So I'm, I'm happy now, you know, because I always, because it's poor in Jamaica, you know. <laughs> yeah. So my sister here, you know, and giving me clothes. I'm smelling like a foreigner now, so you know. I'm yeah. wa thinking I'm walking like on cloud. So yeah. I'm dancing with my friends, I'm showing off. Mm -hmm. So we in the road in Jamaica, and you know, it's late night, around three, well, three o'clock, something like that. Mm -hmm. And the cars, them was passing, and we stop. And all of a sudden, a, a car was coming and we get out of the road. And a, a lot of guys, just all of the men was there. And out of everybody, the police them come at me and point them gun at me. And say, don't move, go on the ground. I said, what do I do? I said, don't say nothing, go on the ground. And they put the gun on me and I was shaking. And they beat me up, they bring me to the station. They bring me to 100 men in Jamaica. Yeah. Five days I spent in 100 men. And a guy was in the, car, in the cell, he said, um, he was looking at me, a, a, a light complexion, a, a red skin guy. He was, he have a little Bible and he was reading. I said, it's something about you. God have a purpose for you. I don't know what he's talking about. Yeah. You know, but, and, and a bad, and a youngster come in there, a Dan, who kill people. So he said, listen, you need to stop killing these people because you're going to die. And he said, I want to surrender. And, and he said, Lord, you see, and he said, when I was praying, I see demon. But I'm not walking with God, and I'm there just start listening to him reading the word. And he said, listen, you, you're telling me, I want you to stand up here. I want you to read the scriptures, and I'm going to pray. This mercy. man is casting out demon out of the person. And I was scared too, because I said, this is, bad. <laughs> this is a bad man. That's in jail. That's in jail, in Jamaica, 100 man. Yeah. For five days. For five yeah. days. Because if I was found guilty, I would never come to the United States. Because if they give you a fingerprint, it's on your record. Mm -hmm. Cannot come. But every time God delivered me from those situations. Mercy. Wow. So you are coming to term with it then yeah. that God have a purpose for you. Yeah. So when I came to the United States now, I end up in trouble. deep, deep trouble now. So you end up in trouble mm -hmm. and you end up in jail. Yeah. I end up in jail. So as I said, I was following these guys in scamming. Yeah. Uh, there was a transaction happening and the guy said, okay, um, transaction happened regarding scamming. So my, the money come in my sister's name or whatever, because he's a Dan from Jamaica. So he's running from, from Jamaica, coming to the U.S. Yeah. and legal, right? So my sister said, can you call him? So the guy said, listen, who are you to call me and ask me for money? You know, you, know, you, you know who I am? You know what people I kill? You know when I was bleaching and locking down the, the, the community? So I get scared because I know who I'm talking to. So I hang up the phone. So I said, man. So he called back and said, look a boy. Who you think you is? Nobody not hang up no phone on me. And I hang up the phone and I said, Lord. And I hang up the phone and I said, listen, anybody who, anybody who go against me, they are, de they are dead man. And by the way, may I come over your yard? I'm your dead. I'm going to call the police. I call the American police. And them, and them, say, them say, what is it? And the police end up come. The guy come up my yard and beat me up, stab me too, and my, in my yard. And the police come, we show them whatever the things that he showed. I showed them my hand was bleeding. They just look at our ID. They don't, they don't do anything. Wow. Um, wow. So my friends now, they see that they know that this guy is a notorious killer. Yeah. So they say, listen, man, you at your yard, you in your house, you need to protect yourself. They say, man, you got to take so, this gun. Okay, go so, ahead. So that's where it started. That's then. where it started. So that's where the real trouble started. Yes. And then something happened then and you end up in jail now. Yes. So now you are in jail, mm -hmm. you are on life support, you could say then, yeah. because you don't know, you may get a sentence mm -hmm. where you're not going to see the road again. Mm -hmm. So you enter the jail. What happened when you go in the jail? When okay. you know that you're locked down and that's it for you. Okay, so now, in the United States now, yeah. I come as a, a, a permanent resident. Yeah. If you get in trouble between that time, that's it for you. You're going to get deported. So I come to the United States 2011. I get in cost, I go into cost in jail 2012, December the 25. So Mercy. you know, I'm not in long in the United States now, right? Yeah. Just a few months. Just a few yes. months. So when I dare and I say, Lord have mercy, I messed up myself. And that's it. They, ch they charge me with second, no, Se second degree murder. Mercy. And I know that's it. So, so the charges come on you and you're in jail now. And when you're mm -hmm. in jail now, you, God start to talk to you. You start to read yes. the word of yes. God. And what happened when you start to read the word? Okay, so when I go So here, you enter now and yeah. all the bad man is in there and say, hey, you know, mm -hmm. and you start to open up the word of yes. God. So what happened? So now God is starting to show me, you know, my dreams, them, I'm starting to pay attention because I'm not distracted now. I'm stripped. 
Yeah. God stripped me of everything. No more communication, no more phone, no more computer, no more nice, comfortable bed, no more nice meal and all of these things. I'm sleeping under this odd little tiny bed. So it's a tiny thing. bed. Tiny it's bed. cold and it's, it, is it soft? Yes, or you know, no, it's, it's, it's tough. You got to hear turning and all of these things. No, no, things. we got to hear pain. so the people can hear. You have so the young pain. people know you got to stay yeah. away from badness, yes. mm -hmm. trouble. So every night, Elder, I start to borrow somebody's Bible. I start to read Proverbs and Psalms. That's the only thing I really understand in the Bible. Proverbs and Psalms. And when so I you realize, have to borrow the Bible. Yes, so they wouldn't give you one. No, but the guy realized it because I come for the Bible every day. I would borrow his Bible and for a few hours I would just read, 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 read. And every day he was a Spanish guy. And one day I come back for the Bible, Bible and I say, I realize that you have a determination to read the word. That's his only Bible. He said, I want to give you this Bible. Amen. That's my first Amen. Bible in my life. He gave me the Bible and I start reading the Bible <laughs> and I book up on David. I fall in love with David's character because David was an um, honest man. David confessed. So I said, man, if David confessed, so the Bible said, David have a heart of the God, own heart. And, and I start to confess, start to repent of my sins. Every night I would cry. Every night I would bawl. Nobody mm -hmm. there to comfort me. And my mom is not there. No one to call, so visiting me and all of these things. Right? So all your friends don't visit you no. anymore. You isolated. Isolated. So we got to tell the young people, when you get in trouble, you're going to be isolated. Mm -hmm. Nobody coming to no look telephone. for you. Unless they love you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I yeah, mean? No <laughs> telephone. And they feed you like you'd have feed a little five-year-old baby. So the little meal they give me, um, throughout the day, and they, what they do, they make the AC cool. You cold all day, and every night I cry, go to my bed hungry. Okay, man, that's mercy. You heard that, ladies and gentlemen? He's saying that the food they give him is so small. So he's hungry constantly. And if you don't have people that give you a little bit of money from outside where you can buy something extra, and they crank up the AC, no blanket, nothing. He's mm -hmm. freezing every day, no food. Mm -hmm. Lord have mercy. So, so because of that, all of the rejection or whatever, I want to commit suicide. Yeah. I have suicide thoughts. Yes. I want to kill myself because in the course rated now, when I the jail I was at, I'm around all kind of different charges. I'm around men who kill their wife, men who kill um, their, their baby mama, kill even the baby, men who shoot up um, all of these things, all kind of different charges, right? So it is a fearful sight mm -hmm. to, to, to see, be around all of these youngsters. Mm -hmm. But I stay in the word of God. But even though I was crying every day, there was no hope. And I, and I want to give my life to the Lord. I want to try to go to church now, mm -hmm. in the chapel and whatever. So I was trying to find how I can start to go to church because mm -hmm. I'm tormented, mm -hmm. you know, fearful, hopeless, crying every day. Not eating right, not getting mercy, enough food, mercy. no support, you know, and start reading the Bible, I'm getting mockery. People mockery me, oh, you just, you come into jail now, you want to start to read the Bible, mm -hmm. you think God going to help you, God help those who help themselves, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, so, so could you imagine you go through that for how many years? Five years. Virgin, ladies and gentlemen, he went through this torment for five years. Mm -hmm. And he read the word, stay in the word for five years. I know we, we have to go have a part one, part two, part three, because <laughs> we don't even touch the story yet. Mm -hmm. And I'm getting the signal that, you know, the, you know, that we have to wrap up the interview because of the, we have... Um, this site is going to be used, so we probably yes. have to go regroup and come back. But listen, five years, being cold, your family outside not catering for you, not coming to visit you and give you even a $5 mm. so you could buy a piece of bread. And you in this isolate, all your friends that you used to hang around disappear. Nobody remember you. They move on to a next friend. And the Lord says, when mother and father forsake you, then the Lord will take you up. We praise God Amen. for his mercy and his goodness and Amen. his love Amen. that he has for his people, that Amen. he will take us up and he will nourish us Amen. and keep us. Virgin, I want to tell you that we want to continue with the interview, but we have to break. In Sister Michelle, yes. Yeah, we have to break. But hear this. 
you got to join us back. We're going to continue taping either a little bit later or downstairs because they're going back tomorrow. You got to hear how the Lord gave him a dream and told him how he's going to get out and how the devil sent a bodyguard for him, a muscle guy to protect him in jail and how the guy knocked somebody out and they went in a coma mm -hmm. and God gave him the vision to pray for that man who was knocked out and the man get up the last day of the coma they were going to unplug him he got up and walk away yes you got to come back <laughs> you got to hear how he met button to christ how god spoke to him and how god sent him to toronto this young man is on a mission most of all you got to find out how he met this <laughs> young woman this young woman and he proposed to her and he never met her yet in person listen you you got to come back so god bless you we got to wrap up the program it's very unfortunate that we have to stop like this though but stay tuned this is a divine rescue Amen. we love you we are happy to have you Amen. in the part one and we know we're going to move to the part two and everybody is on their heels yeah. and ready for part two so until then i am patrick baker from the divine rescue button to christ god bless you what does it take to be free Amen. until then <laughs> Listen, 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 listen,